Any chemist worth his beaker knows how this works. Take an irresistible force. Like Utah's nationally ranked offense, fourth in scoring, ninth in passing, and 11th overall, their byword, potent. Add to that an immovable object. Like Arizona's desert swarm defense, number two in the nation against the run, the Cats gave up 10 points or less in six games. Put them together, and it's an explosive formula. Caution, tonight's ingredients may be combustible. It's Utah and Arizona in the Freedom Bowl next. Tonight, the 1994 Freedom Bowl on Raycom is brought to you by Buick and your local dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By the Motorola Flip cellular phone. The more you need a cellular phone, the more you need Motorola. And by Visa, here at the Freedom Bowl, they'll run it to the end zone, but they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. a gorgeous night in Southern California as you look down on the Big A Anaheim Stadium again this year the site of the 11th annual Freedom Bowl matching the number 14 Utah Utes and the 15th graded Arizona Wildcats welcome to Anaheim Stadium Dave Barnett along with Dave Rowe we're very pleased you could spend part of your holiday bowl week with us we think we have as competitive a matchup as you may see all week long Dave Bro, these are teams that have basically fashioned tradition out of a vacuum. They didn't have much to speak of in football until Dick Tomey arrived at Arizona and Ron McBride arrived at Utah. Well, a lot of similarities, Dave, and one is that both these coaches have taken their teams to the next level. They're both in postseason play, and they plan to be there for a long time. If Utah had a tradition to speak of, as most WAC teams go, it's a passing tradition, and for the last several years, they've had one of the best in the country in Mike McCoy. Oh, they got a real one in Mike McCoy. He's had 11 300-yard games in his career this year, 65% yeah. completions, and has an incredible 28 touchdowns to only 11 interceptions. He's a winner. He's got his choice of targets. You have Curtis Marsh on one side, 61 catches, 11 touchdowns, and Deron Claiborne, 63 catches and five scores. Well, and Marsh is the more downfield uh, receiver. He has the longer per carry average, and he has 11 touchdowns, but Claiborne is just as dangerous coming underneath. Arizona, when they go to the air, has uh, Dan White with one of the strongest arms in college football. Accuracy as well. He had the most accurate percentage of any passer in Arizona history this year. Well, what coaches like about Dan White is that he makes great decisions. He's very accurate. 57% completions. He also, good completion to interception ratio. 14 touchdowns, only 7 interceptions. But compared to the Utes, this is a team that has to have it going on the ground, and their all-time ground gainer is Antoine Carter. Well, when you're 5'10", 177 pounds and you're back there you've got to have great vision into the hole and Carter has that 4.3 yards per carry well if you uh, focus in on the defensive side of the ball you'll see probably why these teams have had the success they've enjoyed this year and we'll do that when we come back to Anaheim about 65 miles south of the nearest stop Number 14 and number 15 about to meet at the 1994 Freedom Bowl as we welcome you back to Anaheim. You can uh, arguably state that no team in the country has made more defensive progress in the last five years than Utah. They go from last in the NCAA in 1989 defensively, the year before Ron McBride arrived from Arizona as the head coach, all the way to 18th in the nation in total defense this year. And Dave, they've done it because of players like Luther Ellis. You talk about him, he bench presses 475, he squats over 600 pounds, he's got a vertical jump of 31 inches, runs a 4-8, 40-yard dash, sounds a lot like Superman, right? He plays like Superman. And when you think of Arizona, you probably think of the Desert Swarm defense. Over the last three years, they have been no worse than second in the nation in run defense, and their anchor is the All-American Teddy Bruschi. Oh, Bruschi, what a football player this young man is. Last year, 19 sacks. This year, he's got 10. He really sets the tone for Arizona. He plays like everybody's All-American, and he certainly is that. Wildcats about a four-point favorite tonight over the Utes. We'll pause now for these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. Fan 
annual Freedom Bowl in Anaheim. Nine and two, Utah, eight and three, Arizona. Utah has uh, won the toss and deferred. They will kick off. Arizona has Kerry Taylor in the middle of that picture. Gary Taylor, his brother on the left, and Lamar Lovett is on the right as Dan Pulsifer prepares for the opening kickoff for the Utes. They were here a year ago and fell down 28-0 before coming back and scaring Southern Cal before falling 28-21. Many of the folks who followed them from Salt Lake City have made the trek again this year to Anaheim. And a good deep kick by Pulsifer returned from three yards deep by Kerry Taylor. A bounce to the outside and not much room there to the 18-yard line. And the stop by Jacinto Peterson there. So that's where Dan White, the Arizona offense, will go to work. White, the junior from San Diego and the edge starting offensive unit for the Wildcats, along with White. They have their all-time rushing leader, Antoine Carter, 3,457 yards, ninth all-time in Pac-10 history. Up front, all seniors on the offensive line, and they're headed by Hisham El Mashtu from Laval, Quebec. By the way of Beirut, Lebanon, and right away to the air, and the catch is made by Richard Dice. 56 receptions on the year to lead the Wildcats a short gain in the tackle by Kareem Leary. And the Utah defense lines up, headed by Ellis, but watch Bronzel Miller, the number 36, the defensive end who led the WAC this year with 12 sacks. The linebackers are headed by Mark Rexford. He had a great game here one year ago, 10 tackles and an interception. They're leading tackler for the second straight year. Ernest Boyd, along with Kareem Leary, led the WAC with six interceptions apiece, tied for fifth nationally. And they pick up six yards on the first down play, now to the ground, and very close to a first down. What Arizona wants to do is mix up the football here. Run that pass play on first down where teams are mostly predictable with a run. Run on second down when they're thinking pass, those types of situations. Dick Tomey in his eighth year at Arizona, 54 wins, 34 losses, and four ties. His fifth bowl, he is 2-2 two and two in the postseason coming into this year. And an injured youth, number three, Ernest Boyd, the strong safety. Boy, As he was involved him. in that hit against Charles Miles, the fullback. Yeah, they hate to lose him back there. Six interceptions. Watch the watch the left knee right there as it gets kind of planted. Oh, ouch! And those linemen falls against it. He really wasn't even in. He was in on a tackle, but just got caught up in the pile. They really need him back. You remember last year, Utah? How many defensive backs they went through? I think Fred Whittingham, their defensive coordinator, said that over the season they had. They had guys that are starters in other positions this year playing defensive back. Again, watch, there's number three. Now watch that left knee. When he Just when he plants it, you see someone fall. Fortunately, it looks like he may have gotten it up before he really had it planted. Hard to tell who it was that delivered the hit on Ernest Boy, the senior from Forestville, Maryland. A very key member of their defense. They need him to force the run. A little bit different task for a strong safety tonight for Utah because they've got to take on the fullback on the run and then cover a tight end, which is unusual for a whack defense. It's third and one, and again, the first man threw miles and turned away and probably short by at least a yard of the first down with the first contact from Mark Rexford, the middle linebacker. Boy, and Rexford stepped right up in the hole. Exactly what you want your middle linebacker to do. Find that little seam. Watch how quickly you see Rexford right there. Face to face, square in the hole. Doesn't allow him to fall forward for that first down. Again, maybe we can see it from the end zone again. Watch 55. Slide to the hole, step up, stay square, keep those legs moving, drive them back, don't let him fall forward. And they bring up fourth down in one. Miles, a late addition to the starting backfield. He's a freshman from Pasadena and started in place of Jason Patterson. No gate on third down. They go with uh, Matt Payton. Average 38 yards per punt. And the sophomore from Tucson sails a nice tight spiral down to the 34-yard line where Curtis Marsh makes a fair catch on a 38-yard punt. Utes take over from there. Senior quarterback Mike McCoy from Novato, California. The second leading passer in Utah history. He won't catch Scott Mitchell, who has had uh, a nice couple of years in the NFL. He has Charlie Brown, 
at tailback, an emergency defensive back Dave was referring to last year. He has emerged with four consecutive 100-yard games. Anthony Brown, first team all-conference and third team all-America, the senior 320-pound left tackle out of Würzburg, Germany. Heads the offensive front. Play action for McCoy and chased and dropped by the nose guard, Chuck Osborne. He led the Wildcats with 11 sacks in his first year as a starter. He is along that front, along with Bruski, the consensus All-American Lombardi Award finalist, a junior from Roseville, California, as good as there was in college football this year. Sean Harris, senior linebacker from Tucson, first team all packed in. Their leading tackler with 89 on the year. In the secondary, Tony Bowie, who had 10 interceptions the previous two years, just one this year. They avoided him through the air, but he says, I'll find other ways to contribute tonight. Hanging this one up for Marsh in single coverage, and Marsh plays defensive back and tries to avoid the interception, although the man covering him, I don't think, was looking to make no, the interception. I think what happened, I think Marsh saw Bowie coming from his safety position and just decided to knock it down. Watch here. The defender has his back. Now, Marsh is inside. You'll see Bowie come into the screen. You see Marsh just kind of knock it down. That's an interesting play. He may have banged his head on the quarterbacks. I saw him hold his hand. His right hand, or excuse me, maybe his left hand, but again, he came to the sideline. He may have hurt his hand when he tried to smack that ball away, hitting it on a helmet. Could have made the catch. Claudius Wright had his back turned, and Bowie wasn't yet on the scene. So bring up third and 18. And with four wideouts, trips on the right side, Brown is the lone setback. Whistles as McCoy backs out, and I think he may have taken too much time. Play clock down to zero. Dead ball. Delay a game. Offense. Five yards. Be third down. So it'll be third and 23. Again, here's what happened to Marsh in the last play. See, he swats the ball there, but he carries through, and he may have hurt his shoulder. Maybe his shoulder. Because, it, again, he just kind of winced with pain and walked to the sideline and came out. It was the hit by Bowie, who just had arrived in the picture. So they back up and on third and 23, safe call on the ground. Charlie Brown barely manages the 20, and the Utes go nowhere on their first series. Well, they call them a desert swarm. They are a swarming defense. You've got great speed in their linemen and linebackers. They get to the ball quickly. You never see them get knocked down. Ron McBride, an Arizona assistant under Tomey, 87 through 89. He helped develop four future NFL offensive linemen at Arizona and has taken the Utah program places they have never been in his five years in Salt Lake City. Fought by Jason Jones. Signaling for the fair catch with Spencer Ray, but it will uh, roll all the way to the 37-yard line, a 43-yard punt down there. In field position when the Wildcats come back offensively after this timeout in Anaheim. Disneyland first open. Here's tonight, courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California. Today's pilot is Tom Mattis from Huntington Beach, California. And uh, we've been blessed with very clear weather in Southern California the last couple of days. As those pictures bear out, Arizona on their second possession, shotgun from the 37-yard line for White. And he wings it complete to the 38. Immediately driven back is Carter, who was their third leading receiver on the year with 23 catches. Boyd, in a great sign for Utah, has shaken off the knee problem and is back to make the tackle. Utah in the first quarter held their last eight opponents scoreless, and both head coaches today thought they would have a real good feel after the first two series. Yeah, that was interesting. Ask him, say, when do you have a feel how the game's going? They said, you let it get two series and we'll have an idea. Utes gave up 10 first quarter points all year, and they were all to Oregon. The team they knocked off. Second down, nowhere for Miles, who was carried three times with very little success, and Mark Rexford has marked him all the way through the middle. Well, what they're trying to do here is get that big pass rush and get that seam where the back can burst through. But again, Rexford steps up in there. You see a good reaction there. Elvis comes back inside. They just do a nice job of reacting back to the football. Now, I think Rexford was a walk-on. Am I right about that? You would know that information. He was uh, just uh, 
a one-year letterman. Last year, is his first year with Utah, led them with 112 tackles. That's amazing. And 111 this year. Shotgun again on third and 11. Outstanding protection. The ball is caught and dropped by the tight end, Lamar Harris. White laid it out on a rope, and Harris, oh. if he had had a little extra time to run under it, maybe brings this one in. Well, we used to say it hit him in a bad place, the hands, but watch this. Running that seam pattern, you'll see the, the corner come across. Look at that, right on the fingertips. That ball, you can't throw a ball any better than that. That was perfect. Arizona again goes three and out. And again, Marsh waiting for Peyton's punt back at his 21-yard line. Roots bring a rush. Peyton again with a nose-up spiral. And Marsh hit immediately. 33-yard punt. Negative yardage on the return. Nothing, nothing early in the first quarter. Gillette introduces the next revolution. Defensive ball game of the first five minutes in Anaheim and Utah for their second possession, starting just across their 30-yard line in a nothing-nothing game. You expect a game like this. Everyone that's looked at this football game said it's going to be one up front. Defensive lines against the offensive lines, and they're not wrong so far. about three yards on first down for Charlie Brown. In this game last year, one of those people you were talking about who had to move positions and play in that uh, injury rack secondary. They had eight injuries a year ago. He started this year, fumbled on the very first play, dropped from first string to fourth string. And then they had injuries hit the tailback position, and so he found himself as the starter again and finally came through with a school record streak of four straight 100-yard games at the end of the year. Boy, they love getting the football to him. He scores every 14 times he touches the football, he scores a touchdown. Give him two officially in second and eight. McCoy again dropped the loss back at the 26-yard line by Osborne, who has his second sack of the night. Now, what Osborne is doing is just doing a what they call a bull rush. You'll see him 71 in there. Just get the guard up, just drive him right back. The cornerback can't step up in the pocket, and he just collapses it. Again, watch this. Just a bull rush, just strength. 71, drives the center, the, the guard back. Quarterback has no place to step up. Bam, down he goes. He had to fill the shoes of Rob Waldrop, the Outland Award winner last year. And in his first year as a starter, Led the Wildcats in sacks two already tonight. It's third and 15. And again, McGoy chased. And uh, as the Wildcats screen for intentional grounding, it's ruled just an incomplete pass. But McCoy just drilling that one into the grass. Well, the Arizona's coming off the football extremely hard. A little bit of a game in there, but look how quick. You see the quarterback barely gets back and sets up. I'm not sure they didn't have a gripe that time again. It looked as if the quarterback watched this pass just to keep from taking the loss. That's not a very strong downfield pass, but no flag on the play. Jim Hoffman, the tackle all over him. Jason Jones again will kick to Spencer Ray. And again, the Wildcats should get good field position out of it. But they haven't taken advantage so far. Excellent kick. Ray on the bag back to his 27-yard line. And manages about a five-yard return. Call it seven yards on a 47-yard punt by Jason Jones. Eight minutes, 15 seconds in a scoreless first quarter. Well, right now, they're both immovable forces. Uh, they have a combined total yardage of minus eight on their first two possessions and for the third time it's Wildcats going offensively from their 32 yard line and they finally give it to Carter for the first time hit him hard as he reaches the 35 yard line he may get three yards out of it the hit applied by Marcus Woods both these teams started superbly this year Utah was 8-0 before they lost Arizona won their first four they were as high as sixth in the country and you can see what happened to Utah. The defense 
over the last five games collapsed on them, and by Arizona standards, the same thing happened to them. It certainly did. We got a, pl a flag that was thrown very late on the play. I think it's going to be a personal foul. And thus we have the biggest gain either team has enjoyed so far. First first down. Ron McBride wanted to know exactly where the personal foul occurred. Marcus Woods made the tackle. Well, you hate to take enthusiasm out of the game, Dave, and uh, that's what that does. But uh, that kind of sets the tone for the players. They say, hey, you play from whistle to whistle. You hear that whistle, you let up. And that kind of sets it right there. You probably won't see that penalty again. Carter again, his second carry, and maybe one. Rexford, very active so far from middle backer. Anytime they run through the middle, they have uh, run right into him at the line of scrimmage. Well, you remember him in last year's Freedom Bowl. He had a great game last year. He played the line very, very well. You see, he's a first-team all-whack linebacker. He slides well, stays flat into the, into the pocket, and that's exactly what you want. Fred Whittingham, the defensive coordinator. McBride gives him free reign to do as he pleases on the defensive side of the ball. The results obviously speak for themselves for the youths over the last few years. Second and ten, time for White, and the ball is underthrown and perhaps deflected intended for Richard Dice. Both these teams are really coming off the ball, and we're expecting a lot of offense in this game, and we don't see it. Look at there, total yards. Well, My. thanks to the penalty, Arizona has 11 total yards. <laughs> Well, the pocket's just collapsing. They're, both lines are coming off. Now, what you have to do in a game like this, you, say, you have to start making adjustments. You have to do those five to seven yard patterns to ease it up, get a few completions, get a little bit of momentum going. But right now, both offenses really being stymied by the defenses. So bring up third and ten. Harry Taylor into the game, bottom of the picture, wide left. Harris, normally the tight end, comes slot left. Four wideouts out of the shotgun. Blitz is picked up. White delivers and almost intercepted by Keith Harrison, who is kicking himself because he had six points if he had hung on to this ball right in his hand. Boy, one of the players that they really have to concentrate on covering is Richard Dice, number 17. It's at the top of your screen. Watch him come across. Attracts two people. Look at that great play there. <laughs> oh. Harrison, he's saying, oh, no, I'll never get a more open one like that. I had nobody in front of me, and I hate to go to the sideline and tell the coach I dropped it. Third time in a row, Arizona forced to kick it away. Although with each kick, they had driven Utah a little bit deeper. This one fair caught at the 12 by Mark. 37-yard punt. They, uh, they have some comparable opponents in their 94 schedules. Utah defeated Colorado State in one of the biggest games in the history of the WAC, 45-31. Arizona's first loss this year, which knocked them down from number six in the country, was at the hands of the Rams. And then the, the Rose Bowl-bound Oregon Ducks, a victim early in the season of Utah, 34-16. A winner, 10-9 over the Wildcats. Well, that was a great football game. Utes who began 8-0. Oh. Lost two of their last three. Brown goes wide. And at best, might have managed a yard before he's driven out by Sean Harris, the fine linebacker. First team all packed 10. Helped by Thomas Demps, 25. Well, everyone talks today, what's the biggest difference in college football? Players are bigger, stronger, and they're faster. They run the line so well, they don't get knocked down. Everyone, you'll see a lot, of, almost every team has got defensive linemen that are running sub five second 40 yard dash times. Harris at 245, well below five in his 40 yard dash. Second and 10, no gain officially. This time a little room to the 16-yard line, and again, Brown is wrapped up by Harris. You hate to point to big downs, but right now, Mike McCoy needs a big down, and it's third down at about five or six. Misdirection play where the back takes a little step the opposite way, but watch how quickly the linebacker gets in there. And when they hit you, they wrap well. You can always tell the sign of a good coach 
a good team is that they wrap them up. They don't let them, they don't bounce off them and let them go for that extra three or four yards. Third and six. McCoy again with four wideouts. Trips on the left side, a one hopper snap, and the ball is caught for a first down at last by Curtis Marsh, driven out at the 25, a nine-yard pickup. What an, what an adjustment by McCoy on this play. This ball rolled back. Watch it. It never gets off the ground. Look at that. Now, you got to look down, take your eyes off the field, and he just throws a rope out there to, into the flat to Marsh. That's what they had. That's one of those adjustments, Dave, that we're talking about that they have to do. Go to that shorter game, take pressure off those offensive linemen, shorten up the game. The later, later in the game, when you start establishing an offense, you can go farther downfield. A roll and another completion to the 31-yard line goes the tight end Rick Tucker. Big hit by Mike Skurlock, the senior corner from Tucson. Tucker will line up either a tight end or slot back. They move him back and forth. He had 14 catches during the year. Four of them were for touchdowns. Look at his size, 6'3", 244 pounds. You don't usually see those tight ends in the, in the whack. And that may have some bearing on what Utah is able to do defensively. They can adjust to a different look on the other side of the ball than what they're used to. So far, obviously, they've adjusted extremely well. Eight of seven, second and three. And not much, if anything, for the fullback, Rob Hamilton, whose first carry is ended by Chuck Osborne. Boy, this is a this is a trap play on the tackle, but they just crushed the inside. Osborne again, 71. Watch him drive off. He drives the center back into the guard. The guard never got around the center to do the trap play. Again, watch the guard in the center. Boom, they bang right in, into each other. That's Chris Ray, who was going to be the trapper. Osborne, like uh, so many of the Wildcats hailing from California, 45 of them, in fact, on this Freedom Bowl roster, are playing in a homecoming game. Third and five for Marsh. And again, Marsh has to play defensive back and break it up with Skurlock and Bowie in the picture. Well, if you want to play coverage in this in an offensive team, you've got to play your cornerbacks have got to play one on one. And that's what Skurlock is doing on that play. Gets a little late help from the set from the strong side safety, but he's got to play Marsh or Claiborne one on one outside. Jones has had a good start. Ray waiting for this one at the 31 yard line. Well, what's the record for punts in this game? We've we're, had a bunch. We're approaching it. <laughs> 439 still to go in the first quarter. They're caught 34-yard line, and a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. The cut uh, traveling 37 yards if the play stands, but uh, right where the ball was snapped is where the flag lies. Well, and it was about fourth and about five yards to go, so it's a very critical flag. And I see Utah clapping their hands. Holding. Oh, boy. That's not what you want to do. You don't want to give a, a team like Utah an opportunity again. If you're an Arizona fan, you don't want to let them have that football. Now they get an automatic first down. Holding on a punt, not well, something you see every Well, game. holding the two outside guys that are going down to cover. But although the flag was thrown right in the middle. Big eight officiating crew conferring with one another. And I think they've determined that since it's a post-possession yeah. penalty, that it will be Arizona ball. Yes, once, once it, it's... Yeah, that's what he's saying, post-possession foul. Arizona again will try to move it on Ron McBride's Utah defense with 4.32 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Introduce it in the first quarter. And you know one thing I'm really proud of, I have not called Dan White, Jack White, one time tonight. And why would you do that? <laughs> well, because his dad, Jack White, was my college quarterback at Penn State. And he wore number 16, too. I'm pretty sure of that. I look at that old 16, I go, uh-oh. Well, Dan just said, uh-oh, but he floats a completion to Dice, making it up as he goes in the clutches of a defender. White got it to die somehow. 
Boy, this one was to deliver it with speed. Now, this looks like his dad used to throw some of those at Penn State. Dude, that was a duck if he ever saw a dying duck. <laughs> watch the trajectory of this football. Again, big pressure up the middle. Now, watch the ball come off his hand here. Watch how high it goes. That's the one we're all, look at that, end over end. And I've seen his dad throw some like that, but not often. He had uh, <laughs> he had a good excuse. He had Luther Ellis and Bronzel Miller both wrapped around him. Remarkable that he got it off at all. It's a pickup of three, second and seven. And Carter will try to go wide, but undercut by Kareem Leary, who came up from left corner and turned what Carter thought might be a big game into maybe two with a flag down in the secondary. Watch Leary come up here. Now, you don't want your quarterback cornerback to come up and sell out. He comes up, keeps outside, last minute, goes up underneath, good position, knocks him off his feet. That's the way you want a corner force. Senior from Sacramento. Personal foul, Utah is the penalty. Wow. I didn't see that. It wasn't on the tackle. That was just a good tackle. I didn't see where that personal foul was thrown. The flag was thrown way downfield. I think the official there indicated to uh, uh, Ron McBride that someone hit someone in the face. You see that when he came up and did that little hand action up into uh, the coach's face? That's what I believe he was indicating. Well, again, the, the two biggest gainers now for the Wildcats have both been on personal foul penalties against the Utes, so they move from their 43-yard line now. And out of the eye. On first down play action, White zinging it complete to Lamar Lovett. Finally, Utah territory at the 40-yard line, a gain of 17. Oh, and was that a pretty pass by Dan White. Stay in the pocket, stay in the pocket. The pocket was collapsing around. Now, the pocket is those offensive linemen keeping out those defensive linemen. Not a lot of room to step up. Finds that little seam, and look at that tra trajectory on that pass. Just throws it right in between coverage. That's the way you deliver a football. You talked earlier about his strong arm. That's a sign of his strong arm. Look at the number of white jerseys around. Love it coming off his career game. Seven catches and 76 yards. And they come from behind win over Arizona State in their finale. First and ten through the middle. And a couple at best on the carry. Ended by Kafusi, Henry Kafusi bringing down Carter. You have Jeff Kafusi, 99 at left end. Henry, 57, his brother, one of a half dozen Kafusi brothers. <laughs> yes. They have uh, Steve on the sideline, graduate assistant. They have Doug, the younger brother who is signed but is currently on a Mormon mission and is out for the next couple of years. Henry, 265 pounds, thought he was headed to BYU. They ran out of scholarships, said sorry. Uh, Utah called him and said, well, we, I think, can find a space <laughs> they for you. can find one. And here he is starting. Run! Second Run! and eight. And complete for Richard Dice, who has a first down of the 28-yard line, a pickup of 11. Again, good timing there. His offensive lineman, Utah's coming hard on the rush. They're really coming off the football hard. But again, watch this in the middle. There's Luther Ellis. Number 83, just throws his center out of the way. Boy, that's going to be a matchup all day. I like Ellis. Where's that? One of those cutoff jerseys. Looks like he's a wide receiver out there. I wonder if he does that when it's snowing out. Doubtful. But he's been fairly well contained so far. Movement twice by Bronzel Miller on the right side defensively, but he reached over and tapped uh, his opposite number, Pulu Kumele, and indicated that he was drawn offside. Now, if you don't, if your offensive lineman didn't jump, that's a good heady call by a quarterback. Come up, change the cadence. He gets that they're jumping on that snap count. He changes the cadence, gets that free five yards. Again, watch. Maybe we may be able to see him. Watch the head of the quarter. See that right there? That's the, inf the influence that he's putting on that ball. Hut, hut. He really emphasizes that second hut. So they move from the 23 now on first and five. By far the deepest penetration by either offense here in the first 13 minutes. Love it goes right, Dice comes left. And White looking that way, hangs it up for Carter and it is stolen away from the interceptor by Anquan Carter. Touchdown Arizona. 
thought Garrett had that football. I mean, he was standing right there. He said, hey, boy, I played this thing perfect. It's right into the corner. He jumps right up, takes the football, and has it stolen out of his hands. That is incredible. What a play. Edwin Garrett, like Keith Harrison before him, had an interception right in his hands, and Carter able to swipe it away and complete a 23-yard touchdown. Well, this one may be worse, though. The other one was dropped. This one, I believe, he caught. He actually he had to have the football. He's standing back there. He's playing that corner position. He plays the ball just perfect. Watch for him. Number 29. He's going to be in white, right to the right of your screen. Watch him play this football. It's, it's a high trajectory. Look at him right there. I've got it. I've got it. How in the world? There's where he stole it out of his hands when he was coming down. Again, I've got it. That's an interception. Oh, he turns right <laughs> around and gives it to him. Oh, that's an amazing play. It almost looked as if he handed the ball off. Watch him. He'll hook one arm, <laughs> and then with the other arm, this is a one-handed steal by Carter. This is amazing. Look at that. He has it right there. Now he turns. He takes it out of his hands. Oh, mercy. An extra point added by Steve McLaughlin, and it is seven nothing. I find the pain of the was handed. In most unusual fashion. <laughs> he said, "I had it all the way." <laughs> There's an upset young man. He was looking at maybe a, a, a long run because he was out in the flat. He had a long sideline. I mean, he was going to take that football and go I'll with tell you it. Why Arizona is really fortunate? They're not behind 14 to nothing. In this game. Absolutely. would be touchdown interceptions. One drop, the other stolen, and it's 7-0 Wildcat. If I'm a defensive player, I'm shell-shocked right now if I'm on Utah's side. I'm just shell-shocked. I can't believe it if I'm a defensive player. They played that ball as well as you can play it. All-American kicker McLaughlin angling this one to the 10-yard line, and Cal Beck with a return. Across the 40, and McLaughlin slows him down. Finally dragged to a halt at the 46-yard line. A return of 44 yards. And all of a sudden, the offense says, hey, wait a minute. The defense may be shell-shocked, but we're not shell-shocked. That 67-yarder by back set up the winning touchdown in their season finale against BYU. Next time he gets his hands on the ball, 44 yards. What a play this is. Set up the kicker right here, try to cut back underneath. The kicker does a good job to make him cut back underneath. That brings help from the, from the cover team. Arizona scoring drive of six plays and 77 yards. Utah, though, the minute 47 of the period from the Arizona 48. And to the 43 goes Brown before he is uh, interrupted by Harris. Utah's first 12 snaps, averaging nine inches. <laughs> and uh, they're used to these slow starts. 48 nothing the first quarter of the last three years. Uh, that's including our first quarter tonight. Yeah, you think of last year's game. They went in at halftime. I believe they were down 28 nothing. They came out the second half, and a lot of people said that if that game had lasted last year, two or three more minutes, Utah would have pulled it out and won. USC coaches said that. <laughs> and I believed it. Two years ago, fell way down to Washington State, the Copper Bowl. And down 7 0 here, but McCoy over the middle, incomplete, intended for Rick Tucker at the 25 yard line. And Dave, you see the way the tempo changes a little bit. McCoy using that, that mix up on the pass plays, that little short pass he's had some success with on that last series. It takes a little bit of pressure off those offensive linemen because you're not throwing downfield using that three to four second pass pattern having to having to have protection for that long they really need to capitalize on this drive they've got they've got great field position from their return team they need to put some pressure on arizona under a minute now in the first period wildcats twice move but get back and on third and five McCoy has Tucker this time, and he should have a first down to the 36. Well, that was a good stretch by Tucker that time. Great concentration. 
It's a 244-pound tight end. Big blocking tight end, you think. But watch this stretch coming right into your pocket here. Look at this. Turn back inside. Good concentration. Pull that ball in. Get it in tight. That's a good possession and gives him a first down. Usually when they go his way, they mean business. Four of his catches for touchdowns out of a total of 14. First and 10, 37 yard line. Clock rolling at 32 seconds as Brown finds a seam off left tackle to the 31 on what might be the final play of the first quarter. Well, that's a good cut. I like Brown's feet in the backfield. You look for a running back to have that quick feet where he can change direction. And that time, what looked like a simple play ended up about a four-yard gain because he made a great cut when he saw that hole open up. Used to the line of scrimmage, but will not get the snap off before the end of the first period at Anaheim Stadium. Seven to nothing, Arizona. We pause now for these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. The interviews are about sex. As we begin the second quarter, seven to nothing, Arizona, but Utah driving at the Wildcat 31-yard line. Back at Anaheim Stadium, Dave Barnett along with Dave Rowe. Best drive so far by the Utes, and it'll be second down and five to begin the second quarter. Marsh and Claiborne both go wide right. Hamilton and Brown split behind the floor. Double snap before he chased, drops. This time the sack by Bruski. Arizona's third sack, the first two were by Osborne, this one by Bruski, who was second during the year with 10 sacks. Well, he's so quick coming off the ball, he runs right around the tackle. Then you're not gonna make it outside there. You can't run around somebody like that. He's got great speed. And you heard the crowd all, Bru, Bru, Bruski. His mom wanted him to stay in the band in high school. Did everything <laughs> she could to talk him out of going out for football and the uh, Several years later, a consensus All-America finalist for the Lombardi Award. 6-1-2-55. It'll be third and 19. McCoy over the middle and caught by Claiborne. But now they say he juggles it, and it is incomplete at the 38-yard line. Now, the numbers through the first quarter look this way. Only two Utah first downs. You Utah with minus three on the ground. That's typical against the Arizona Desert Swarm defense, though. Only 22 through the air. And Arizona with 68 total yards. But if not for the dropped interceptions and the penalties, especially the costly personal foul penalties against Utah, Arizona probably still scoreless. This is the fourth Utah punt already. And Jones trying to hang this one high. Ray will let it drop it on into the end zone. <laughs> 14.02 just underway in the second period in the 11th annual Freedom Bowl in Anaheim. It was a it's seven to nothing. We have had seven first downs between the two teams and a total of seven punts between them. Arizona from their 20 yard line on first down. Short drop, zings it. For a first down to Richard Dice to the 36-yard line. And a gain of 16 for Dice, the leading receiver, with 56 catches, eight for scores during the regular season. Boy, you can't give him too much room because Dice just comes off the ball and just bam, right there. Now, watch a quick move. Quarterback doesn't come up and get him. You've got to keep him inside. Fortunately, get some help. But again, you can't lay that far off him. You've got to stay up tight on him. But boy, speed will burn you. He's just a sophomore. This year, the third best receiving year in Arizona history. And already four catches tonight. On first down, Miles the fullback for the first time with a little room up the middle. Rexford and Ellis have been uh, plugging that gap pretty well. Derek Stapley, the strong side backer, makes this tackle on Miles. Well, Stamer, Paul Stamer has really played well in this game. He's number 70 atop there. He just gets that good turnout block on Bronzel Miller, and that's what opened up the hole. 
Interesting that Arizona runs their plays and they don't signal men like you see a lot of teams do. They use a tailback and they use a tight end a lot of times to run those plays in. Sometimes the flanker backs love it and carry Taylor. Used to shuttle back and forth. Out of the eye on second and three. And uh, very close for the first down at the 45 yard line. Stapley again in on the stop. Antoine Carter, a bit of a slow start this evening, but at some point, you know, Tommy is going to have to call on him. Yeah, he's got to go to him a little bit more. Sure does. This is a good situation to go to him. He averages 4.3 yards per carry. He needs to get that football. Five carries, nine yards so far for Carter. Well, you remember he had that neck injury in the last game? They were really concerned about that. They said they wanted to get him a few hits just to just kind of loosen him up a little bit. Sprained his neck in the third quarter against Arizona State. But a starter tonight on third and one, takes the pitch wide, cuts it back, and has a first down to the 48. Luther Ellis is being handled about as well as you can for a first-team All-American. Yeah, he's number 83. Watch him. They get inside. They turn him. He has to come around the backside, and they slip off. Now, that's a good little grasp in there. That's uh, uh, El Mashtu. He's got a good grab in there. He got across him, did a good job. Boy, he's Mr. Excitement out there. <laughs> you talk about intensity. <laughs> he has to control Which, his intensity. But sometimes he turns it <laughs> against his own teammates. No, I couldn't believe when I read that. Got in a fight with his own teammate? And uh, several on the other side of the ball has toned it down a little bit as his senior year has gone on. Play action and White going deep. And incomplete in and out of the hands of Lamar Lovett. You I saw the arm of Dan <laughs> White, though, who hangs that one up about 60 yards. One-on-one -on -one coverage by Garrett. I almost thought we were going to get an instant replay. Watch Garrett inside position. Look, he almost takes it out of his hands there again. Oh. Again, Garrett, great position inside. You see Lovett go up high. He has the football right there. No, he doesn't have the football. Good play by Garrett at the cornerback. So second and ten. Lovett replaced by Kerry Taylor. At the top of the picture, Dice comes wide right, wide against shotgun. Handles the low snap. Waits and delivers, and this one is intercepted by Harold Lusk. Lusk continuing up the sideline, and they'll mark him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Gives him 26 yards on the return. I think Lusk is one of those players that also changed position from last year to this year. He's playing center field. This ball gets tipped. Watch here. The receiver tips it up in the air. Good defensive backs react to the football. Now get to the outside. Pick up a couple blockers. You can see again. Watch the football get tipped. When it gets tipped, you just react to the ball as quick as you can. And that's what Lust does in that play. They had to move him to backup quarterback from backup quarterback to defensive back last year because of all the injuries they've kept in there this year. He had a 100 yard return to help seal the victory against Colorado State. One of his four interceptions during the regular season. This one returned to the 34. Utah down seven to nothing. Early in the second period flags are down. And the carry just to the 33 yard line flags as soon as the ball was snapped and the handoff went to Brown. Already celebrating. And late getting up is the man who carried the ball, Brown. Lusk, whose brother Henry Lusk, was the MVP of this game last year, but has missed the entire season because of a shoulder injury. And Brown being checked, the senior from San Diego. Five yards, repeat first down. Boy, you talk about big hits. Watch when Brown gets into this line. Watch Sanders come up here and get him. Sanders is a strong safety. Watch there. Bam! There's Camp. Now watch there, Sanders. Look at that head right in the stomach. It's a wonder he didn't pull that football out. Again, let's watch it. There's the first hit now. He keeps his feet. And look at that. Bam! Well, I promise you one thing. Uh, 
He's, he's walking off the football, but he's taking some deep breaths. Well, the mark off of five yards will have Utah just inside the 30, and it'll be first and five from there. Well, you wonder why these teams are so good. You see that kind of football? That's just great coaching and great talent. I mean, they all, they all strike. They're not timid. They come off the football. Give to the fullback Hamilton for nothing. First man there was the outside backer Chris Lopez. We pause now for station identification. This is the Raycom that. One of the world's most enduring symbols, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, providing these beautiful aerial pictures above the big A tonight. And no gain to make it second and five. What's amazing to me, Dave, is we're looking at an offense that averaged almost 450 yards a game. And they're just not moving the ball with any, nothing. Big pattern inside the five, and it is picked off. Intercepted by Kelly Malvo. Boy, you don't want your quarterback forcing the football, and that's exactly what Mike McCoy did. Great coverage there on the outside on the corner, and he just forces the football in. Again, he throws it early. You can see he almost hesitated there. Now look at this. Quarterback reading his eyes, reading his eyes, plays inside coverage, comes down on about the one-foot line, but just an excellent play there. Malvo, a true freshman from Long Beach. They say he's going to be a tremendous football player. He is one. You don't see true freshmen. You see that redshirt freshman where they, they, they take that year and get kind of acclimated to college life. But you have to realize, wasn't long ago that young man was uh, getting out of high school. Yeah, how good do you have to be to step right in and start as he did uh, for half the season well, for the for the tenth best defense in the country. Sure, and beat out a cornerback like Claudius Wright, who was a senior, and he's an excellent football player. Well, White will try and gouge out a couple. Oh, and fumbles the ball at the five-yard line, and it is recovered by the Utes. Oh, -ho. Ernest Boyd hops on the fumble by Dan White on the quarterback sneak. Well, what happened on this play is they stuffed the center. The center really never got off the line. Look at the center. He actually gets pushed right back into the quarterback, and you see people coming in there, and right there, the ball just pops out. You know, as a quarterback, you're taking that football, and you expect to see the center get punched right up in the air. That's what caused the fumble. That was just great line play. You got Hoffman up there, Osborne. Well, excuse me, that's Luther Ellis, I should say, that was up there, and Cabusi that you talked about. Those were the two players that were up front and stuffed that center. Boy, what a turnaround. Ernest Boyd always around the ball, and he hops on the fumble at the five-yard line. It's first and goal from there, and McCoy out of the shotgun. Well, that's interesting, a shotgun. Swing pass, Brown. Trying to make a move on Malvo, who drives him out, and they may lose one here. So Malvo, who just made just the fourth interception of the year by the Arizona secondary with the stop here on Brown. Well, this is really interesting. First down on the five-yard line, and you go to a shotgun. You're just saying, hey, we're not going to be able to run the football against you? Now, one thing that Utah does down here is we see some of those crazy plays that they've set up. They have some unbelievable formations that they can come out in. They may need that in this situation. This, however, not one of them. This is just trips right for wide out look. After losing one, second and goal, six yard line. Breaking the tackle, cutting it back, touchdown, Charlie Brown. Oh, that is just great effort by Charlie Brown. Sean Harris, number 49, he had him in the backfield. Watch right here. There, he's got him, right? Nobody helps him. He pulls that foot out now. He runs the last seven, eight yards all on his own. That's just great individual effort. Brown, who has had as up and down a year as anybody on the Utah roster, within a point of the tie, and Dan Pulsifer makes it 7-7 seven to seven with 10 minutes and 3 seconds in the second quarter. you here for a little chat about you. 
Boy, 90% of the time, if Sean Harris has you, you don't go anywhere else. Brown breaks that tackle, takes it in from six yards out. Yeah, this is just, this is just, he needs some help. He's got him by the foot, but give some credit to Charlie Brown to break that tackle and find the end zone. Again, you'll see Harris come up in there. He's got him. He's their number one tackler. He just breaks the tackle, comes out there, just finds the opening, and scampers into the end zone. Brown, who had the game-winning score in the last minute against Brigham Young, has the game-tying score in the first five minutes of the second quarter of the Freedom Bowl. Seven to seven. On the gift by Dan White, who fumbled at his own five-yard line. Also for getting the crowd into it and nails the kickoff about a yard deep. With it's returned by Carter. He breaks an ankle tackle. And finally caught at the 21. Well, if your name is Charlie Brown, you can imagine the hardships that you have to go through in life. But he had a, a good enough sense of humor about it to have a dog and name him Snoopy. Which no, don't tell me that. He has a dog named Snoopy. It was even a white dog. Now you're going to tell me his sister's name is Lucy. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> and a white dog. It wasn't a beagle, though. It was a white lab. <laughs> but he said, everywhere you go, people are calling you blockhead. They want to hold the ball so yeah, you can kick it. Yeah, let me hold the ball it. so you can kick it. <laughs> He has tied this one right back to work from his 21. Oh, Luther Ellis. Oh, I want to tell you something. Luther Ellis just picks up the center. This is Master He's 295 pounds. Watch 83 in the center of your screen. Watch me. Just picks him up. He gets him up now. Just take him right on back. Drop him on the quarterback. Just pick the quarterback up with one hand, the center up with the other hand. Wouch. It's called leverage. At the end of the game, Dave and I will be selecting the Buick player of the game. At the 15-yard line, a loss of seven yards to bring up second and 17. Ellis again got off the ball quickly. Going around the left side is Gary Taylor, who carries for the first time. And a yard at best for the sophomore from San Diego. Watch how quick Ellis gets off the ball. Well, what he's doing is he's guessing the snap count. You see how quickly he gets off? Nobody gets off that quick. He's just guessing the snap count, and he's guessing it right. Now, if you're a heady quarterback, you come out again. You change that, that snap count. We talked all, all earlier about what he does. I mean, he plays like Superman. Look at that. Vertical leap, 33 inches. He can get up. I mean, we're talking about a man who's six foot six, 288 pounds. That's incredible. They figure he ought to be somewhere in the top 20 of the first round. They're not sure if he will go that high, but they think he's worthy of such a selection. Third and 14, Dice first down to the 34. And that may be the best pass that Dan White has thrown all night, 18 yards. Boy, and Dice is their go-to man when they need it. They really needed it on that play. About third down and 12. Now his line gives a little bit of time in here. They got a little twist. White stays in the pocket. Now watch Dice. You throw that ball close to him, he doesn't bobble. He's their go-to man. And he's just a sophomore. He's the slot man. Again, you see the distance right there. He kind of gets separated. But when he turns around, the timing is just perfect. Ball's right there. Fifth catch already. 53 yards, two or more every game. That's his consistency. Antoine Carter, right side of the 39, hit there by Rexford. Well, Utah knew coming into this game and talking with their coaches, they said Arizona will be more physical than any team we've played this year. And this has been a physical game. Fred Whittingham, in our, in our talks today, is one of the great friends I have in uh, football, one of my teammates when I first started playing professional football. Very, very intense. And he said, our guys are going to get a wake-up call. He said, we're going to see, we're going to see those guys come. It's going to look like there's 14 or 15 of them out there. Second down and seven. Seven and a half mark. Second quarter. That intended for Dyson. It sails a good five yards over his head. 
You know, when you think about a whack team doing what Utah's defense has done, almost unprecedented, oh, since uh, several years ago BYU had some good defenses, and Whittingham was at BYU sure. at that point. But most of the year, they were in the top ten offensively and defensively in the nation. Well, every time we've looked at a whack team, we've thought offense. Remember, outscore them. 55 to 54, 38 to 34. That's the way the WAC just has that that history or tradition of playing. And all of a sudden, in comes this new coach, a fellow named McBride, and he says, "Hey, we're going to play some defense." He may he has really turned the WAC around as far as a defensive team. Brentford showing blitz on third and seven, but should be a first down. And again, the man. Getting open is Dice. He had good coverage by Kareem Leary, but dives and should have the first down. Well, Dice is just the go-to man. Interesting delivery by White. We can't see it on there, but this is just an out pattern. Good, quick delivery, but White just almost sidearms that football. He doesn't have that great mechanics where he throws the ball way over high. It looks as if he kind of almost slings the football, but he gets great strength on the ball. He delivers it quickly. Has the great arm strength, and yet the most accurate passing numbers any Arizona quarterback's ever had this year. Through the middle, Gary Taylor, Perry's brother. He is the younger brother, the sophomore from San Diego. Second leading rusher with better than 300 yards during the year. Now, when you split the offensive line, splits the defensive line, this is what you get. See, Rexford commits up top. Good block there by Miles up front on Rexford. Then they just split the line and bam, they come right on through. This is Rexford, 55. He's going to come up. Bam, he meets Miles. Good adjustment there by the back into the hole. That's what it takes. Coordination. Gain of eight. And out of the eye on second and two. Another quick drop and another completion. And another Arizona first down at the 38-yard line. Jeff Chison who had just two catches during the season. Tenth first down already for the Wildcats. Well, that is an interesting delivery. I haven't seen Dan White throw the football, but it's different from his father. His father used to have that high delivery. He's got that almost, it almost looks like a sidearm delivery, but he's got great whip with it. Delivers it with a lot of power. Like his dad, he began at Penn State. And then transfer actually sat out two years before finally getting the starting range last year. Anquan Carter at the 38. Henry Kafusi along with Rexford on this stop. Oh, and I like the way Rexford fills. Stay square, come up in the hole, bam. And you see they don't fall forward when he hits them. They call him a great college football player. Doppel at 6'1". As a middle linebacker, he can play much beyond here, but uh, they think... Uh, very highly of him. 11 total yards all Utah has managed, and yet it's tied. That's incredible. And they can say they should yeah. be ahead if they had the interception. That's right, they had. Well, they certainly shouldn't be behind. Arizona should not have scored on that interception. By hanging this one up and broken up, intended this time for Kerry Taylor, Leary made the deflection. Boy, and Leary plays this ball as well as you can play it as a cornerback. He looks at the receiver's eyes. When he sees the receiver look back, he looks back at the ball. Now, keep that inside position. Keep the ball from the receiver. That's just great corner play. And I'll tell you, in the whack, you know as well as I do, you get a lot of opportunities for learning experiences. 11th play of the drive. White so far, 10 of 17 through the area, has 108 yards, one score, one interception. One very costly fumble. On the draw play, Carter, and they were ready. Ellis right there along with Marcus Woods. Boy, this is one of those tough times to give up the football. You're on about the 35, 36 yard line. You've got to punt it because it's fourth down and about eight yards to go, but you don't want to punt it into the end zone. You know, I think you're right about uh, uh, the look-alike contest there that we were talking about today. <laughs> Steve McLaughlin won the Groza Award as the outstanding kicker in college football, Football Writers Association All-America. This will be a 54-yarder, which would equal his career best. And this one will not even be close. Let's go, let's go, get out of here. 
He was three of five from beyond 50 this year. That really not worthy of his All-American season, and we're still tied, 7-0. 1879, Siemens invents the first electric locomotive, top speed 10 miles an hour. That was then. This is now. Today, Siemens technology can connect cities at over 200 miles an hour and carries millions of commuters with more comfort and convenience all across America. Transportation is just one of Siemens' vast array of technologies that help keep America on the move. Siemens, precision thinking. Every day, we all find a way. A promise made. America's most complete source of auto parts, a national warranty program, and customer service only Napa can give. No wonder more people trust Napa to keep their vehicles running. We keep America running. We keep America running. Truth is, cellular phones look a lot alike. Fact is, they're not. Often imitated, never duplicated. The one and only Motorola Flip cellular phone. The more you need a cellular phone, the more you need Motorola. Well, finish uh, your thought. All right, well, who's he look like? Uh, look at him. Dick Schaap? You're exactly right. He even looks more like him without his hat and his, uh, his uh, microphone on there, his headset. Okay, take it off, Coach, so I can see. There he is. Look at him. Adjust the hat. <laughs> well, who does Ron McBride look like? This? Ah, you're going to have I'm gonna have to study that one a minute. <laughs> Utah with 11 total yards, still tied at seven apiece. Charlie Brown turned away, and the first contact made by the defensive end, Akeel Jackson, 96, a senior from... Auburn, California. This is the Desert Swarm right well, here. Watch it. There's no place to go. He starts all the way over on tackle now. Come along the line, and right there's Jackson. You wonder why they call it a swarm? Defenses love nicknames. You know, you've had the fearsome, foursome, and the purple peep leaders, and all those different uh, names. This one just loves the acronym, the Desert Swarm. And they do. They swarm on defense. Gain of one. Brown again, this time some room. And Brown runs into Lopez and Bowie at the 45. He'll be a yard shy of the first down. I think the most remarkable thing about the Arizona defense, 59% of the opponent runs this year gain two yards or less. So this is a real aberration. It certainly is. This is trap player up the middle. And then you talk about you talk about that stat. What's amazing is when I added it up and you talk about 59% of their runs under two yards, look at tonight. They're doing an incredible job. Utah has an average to yard. 32% of the time you get no gain or loss. So by that standard, Brown just broke a big one. Incomplete. On third and one, they go to the air, and it was intended for Claiborne. Boy, what a call on that play. And that's, uh, it's almost like you're saying, hey, we don't think we can make a yard. You got to go for that first down. Now you've got to punt it and give it back to Arizona. They've got a lot of confidence in that passing game. Wayborn fairly well bottled up so far today. And for the fifth time, Jason Jones is on. Spencer Ray waiting at his 20. He's advantaged only two first downs in this first half. Jones with a wobbler, and it takes a great Utah bounce, and they will chase this one down at the six. 49-yard punt with 2.51 remaining in the first half. Back after these words from your local station, this is the Raycom Network. Late first half, 7-7. Seven to seven. Last time Arizona was battled up here, they coughed it up, and that led to the only Utah score from their six-yard line after the Jason Jones punt pinned them deep. Audible along the line right here. And the give through the middle will get him out to the 12-yard line on 
Antoine Carter carried. Derek Stapley making the tackle. Antoine Carter, their first 1,000-yard rusher at Arizona since uh, 1986, and when he gained 100 or more yards this year, they were unbeaten, 5-0. His best game, 224 in the loss to Colorado State. And they are well represented on the first-team All-Pac-10. Ruski, All-American. Harris has some All-American honors, as does McLaughlin. Losing a lot of talent, many, many seniors in their final game for the Wildcats. And now you want to think about clock management. You're down to about two minutes. If you're able to hold them here, you can get that football, get it back, good field position, at least get a field goal try because they have, Utah has got a great field goal kicker as far as distance. He's got a strong leg. Well, as a matter of fact, you got three timeouts here for Utah. Why not call yeah, one right Yeah, why not? That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Don't let that clock go down. If they stop them here, it's third down about three. Now this play started with two minutes. It's down to 140. White taking all the time he can off that clock. Good time and then hit as he delivered and it is broken up and dropped. There were two defenders who had their hands on the ball and then almost coming back for the catch was Lamar Harris. I would say this is the most this is the most knocked around football you're ever going to see. I thought Harris almost came down with the football. The arm of the quarterback got hit. White got hit. Now watch this. There's the ball. Now here it goes up in the air. Now watch him right there. He almost takes it off the ground. Now watch the arm. See he gets hit. He's not able to step forward. And there's the big man in his face again. Luther Ellis. Well it was not even intended for Lamar Harris. But it bounced off first. Kareem Leary, then Marcus Woods, then Harris, incomplete, 123, as uh, Peyton gets the kickoff and an Arizona hop. Boy, I thought that touched one of Utah's players. Came awfully close on one of the covers. 42-yard kick, and the Utes have a minute 13 to work with when we come back. It still bugs me that I waited to try Old Spice High Endurance just because I thought all deodorants worked the same. Dumb. This proves it's the best. Better than the leading stick. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer. It protects better. You can't ignore that. Or this guarantee. Try it. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. You gotta figure anyone that serious about deodorant deserves a serious shot. Come on, take the High Endurance Challenge from Old Spice. I did. One fall, we took out our son's favorite sweater and it didn't fit anymore. I think life insurance is like that. You don't realize how much your life has changed until you take out your policies and sit down with your agent. That's why we have the State Farm Family Insurance Checkup. I can help you see if your coverages are up to date or if you've outgrown them. Then you make the decision. A policy has to fit, just like a sweater. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. On average, you drive about 500 hours a year. That's like 21 straight days. Days and nights. And that's the reason for the all-new interior of the new Regal for 1995. 21 days. In most imports, that could be like a sentence. In the Buick Regal, it's more like a three-week vacation. In the 11th Freedom Bowl, 7-7, seven seven, Utah with all three timeouts. And a minute 13 to work with as they go from just outside their 45-yard line. Haven't moved the ball really to speak of all evening. On the ground, breaking a couple of tackles, picking up about four yards on first down. Juan Johnson, a true freshman from West Valley City, Utah, gets his first carry. And this is amazing. Now the clock is under a minute. It doesn't even seem like they're hurrying. I, this is really surprising to me. You talk about clock management, using that clock. Why do you take the timeouts into the end zone? They're not even hurrying, breaking the huddle. Also for the kicker, waiting to see if they get him in range, but now they're down to 41 seconds. And this one is uh, caught, but not enough for the first down. Kevin Dyson also doesn't get out of bounds. He manages the 47. 
And now they will burn, finally, that first time out. And Dave, if you want to see a really neat angle, this is what coaches would love to see. From the blimp, this is exactly like you draw it on the chalkboard. You can see the catch there out into the flat. He tries to get out of bounds. He comes down in bounds. And they had to stop the clock via the timeout. 29 seconds. Again, you talk about I look at clock management. Why take those timeouts into the end zone? Why not call one down there on that third down play? They would have had the ball with almost two minutes. You've got to get somewhere between around the 30, 35 yard line to get in field goal range. Well, now with 29 seconds, you have two timeouts. But you first got to worry about the first down. So you think on third and three, they're thinking short yardage here. Yeah. That carries them down somewhere probably around 20 seconds. Well, you've got to you've got to complete that short pass. It's third down about three to four yards. You've got to complete that short pass. You almost think that they're going to go short pass. Now, again, they may decide, hey, we may go long on this play and just risk it all with 29 <laughs> seconds left. But you've got to be thinking first down. But then if you get first down with 29 seconds, you're going to have to use another timeout. Then you only have two or three more plays. Those numbers from McCoy just don't compute. This is the uh, sixth leading passer in the nation that Arizona is holding in check. Just did get it off, and it's incomplete. He was on his way to being sacked for the third time in this first half by Osborne when he got rid of that one, and it stops the clock at 25 seconds. Boy, if you're a quarterback and your pocket just crumbles around you, and watch this big push up in the middle. Big guy's coming off the ball. You see 71 in there. That's Osborne. He's dragging him down again. Boy, this is tough day for a quarterback. Well, Jones will have to kick in Arizona. May get a snap or two. Just an interesting first half of football. Maybe they knew something I didn't know. Maybe they knew they weren't going to make that first down. Gave him some pressure, but he hangs one up, and Ray makes the fair catch at the 15, 32 yards, but Jones again able to hang this one inside the 20. And uh, Arizona, with all three timeouts, takes over with 17 seconds. Boy, but you got a guy like McCoy, even though he's done nothing in the first half, it is surprising that they, in effect, took the ball out of his hands on the last drive. Well, you're looking at a quarterback in McCoy that threw for over 3,000 yards this year. That's an incredible thing. 28 touchdowns, only 11 interceptions, 65% completions. That's incredible. And they're just not moving the football. And Arizona apparently won't try to move it with their quarter ending play. They will take all three of their timeouts into the uh, locker room where they'll die. And a very frustrating first half it had to be for Dick Toma. Dick Tomey and the, the Wildcats with a huge advantage over Ron McBride and the Utes in total yardage. And yet on the scoreboard, we're right where we were on the opening kickoff tie it's seven to seven halftime in the Freedom Bowl in Anaheim California tonight's Freedom Bowl on Raycom is sponsored by Dean Witter there are many ways to measure success Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time by Buick and your local dealers remember Buick the new symbol for quality in America and brought to you by Edge Shave Gel. Ultimate closeness, ultimate comfort. That's the Edge. If you're in high school and you want... The 1994 Freedom Bowl on Raycon is brought to you by Toyota. I love what you do for me, Toyota. By the new Gillette Sensor Excel with micro fins that set up your beard for the world's best shave. And for leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering, depend on Siemens Precision Thinking. Arizona has dominated every which way except on the school board. Now gaining the use by over 120 yards, but at 7 to 7, McCoy, 5 of 13, 24 yards in the first half. White, 10 of 18 for 109. White has had a typical game, and McCoy, uh, by his standards, has not even started yet. Oh, yeah, he hadn't even cranked it up there. He, he's usually good for 30, 40 passes a game, and we talked about them coming into this game averaging 400 and almost 450 yards per game. So, and two of the things, two of the big weapons, we talked about Marsh and Claiborne. 
61 catches and 63 catches. I think Marsh has got one. I don't think Claiborne's ca caught a pass yet tonight. Has not. And in fact, the pass that was intercepted by Malvo that we showed you was on Marsh's favorite pattern. He likes to run fades, and Malvo had it pretty well uh, scoped out, came up uh, in one-on-one -on -one coverage with a big play for the interception. So only one catch by their favorite receiver, something that you know has to be discussed in that halftime locker room. How did they get their wideouts loose from the Arizona secondary? Well, in, in talking with the coaches, we talked about what do they say at halftime. It was really interesting. They go to each position. They talk about what they did right, what they did wrong. Not a lot of yelling and screaming, a lot of teaching, a lot of making adjustments, those type of things. Talk about Utah and their possessions in the first half. Look at that. How many punts? One, two, three, four, five, six punts. It's amazing. So six of eight yeah. possessions go three plays or fewer, although they scored on one of them. And no more than six plays on any possession in the first half. But uh, McLaughlin will kick it away for Arizona, and Utah will at least get first crack offensively here in the second half. And you know the most interesting stat is that score, 7-7. Seven to seven. Clarence Lawson deep along with Cal Beck, and it's Beck from the nine-yard line. Beck with a 44-yard return of the first half. This one ends at the 34-yard line, and it's a total of 24 yards on his second return. So the Utes go from there, and McCoy probably has had a good long talk with himself at halftime. Oh, I'm sure he has. I think they've made great adjustments to take pressure off him. He's a player that really responds to pressure. He's been in this situation before. He's got a lot of confidence. He's got great talent. So watch for him to make those adjustments. Shorten up that passing game. Get a little more offensive scheme going. Great drop and steps up and keeps and slides to the 40. That's actually one of the better <laughs> running plays they've had. Tonight. Well, they stepped, uh, they stepped up because they funneled the big defensive lineman around him. He was able to find a little seam there and run up for about five yards. He's not a scrambler, though. He's not a quarterback that's going to take off and really be a threat running. Arizona living up to their billing in the first half. Gain of six on the first play of the second half. Bring up second and four. And the lone setback, Brown, tried to bounce left. Maybe one, if that, to the 41, where the hit was applied first by Jim Hoffman, the defensive tackle from La Mesa, California. Boy, I am really impressed with the, the tackling on both teams. A lot of times in college, you see them, it's not that they shy away, but they don't wrap up the, the uh, running backs. This Arizona team and this Utah defensive front seven, the linebackers in line, I mean, they come up, and when they hit you, they pull you down. Look at them. Big men up front. No arm pads. There's a, there's a jersey, a little jersey to keep warm, but they're just, they're just hosses up front. Big game one, third and three. Pressure comes. Ball is uh, caught and should be a first down at the 45-yard line. Well, it's going to be close. Did he have to make the 45? He had to make the 44, <laughs> and Marsh, with his second catch, has the first down yard. Now, there's an example of that tightening up, that little short slant pattern inside. you got to just drill the football in there. Marsh and McCoy, two of the 34 youths from California, a total of 79 California products on these two rosters. And so they both look at it as a great chance to enhance recruiting in this area. They rely heavily on what they can get out of both the high school and junior college ranks in Southern California, as do so many other programs. Brown hit this time by Akeel Jackson and uh, Tony Bowie on first down. Boy, you're not going to run a trap play when you're getting stuffed on that line. You've got to drive them off the line, and Arizona's coming off the ball so hard they're getting penetration, and the backside guard that leads on a trap play, he's getting picked off. He's just bumping into other players that are getting knocked back. One yard on first down. Four wideouts, trips on the left side, and McCoy looks that way. Uh -oh. A deep drop, and then he looks up and has his tight end, Tucker, who is swarmed 
near midfield. It'll be third and about six. This was going to be a screen play out to the left, and what a great adjustment by McCoy on the play because the receiver got knocked down in the pile, and McCoy came off of him and found his tight end. Now watch, it's going to be a screen to the right of the screen. See the linemen start to run out there? The back is caught up in the pile. Now McCoy makes the adjustment, throws the ball out to the tight end, and Tucker picks up positive yardage on the play. Good adjustment. Gave Tucker a nice spot. They'll give him, in fact, the Arizona territory just outside the 48. And uh, it's third and four. Kevin Dyson goes in motion. For one of the few times McCoy has time and now dropped by Teddy Bruski. A coverage sack goes to Bruski, his second of the game. Well, Bruski and Osborne are having a fight up there to see how many sacks. But look at the coverage. This is time. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. You just can't keep them out that long. And unusual for McCoy to hang on to the ball that long. He had to know Bruski was in the neighborhood. Well, when you got when you got Bruski coming down and you've got Hoffman, Osborne, and Jackson, they're flat out coming off the football. Now McCoy may have gotten hurt on that play. He's on the bench. And I think they're trying they're, they may be working on his knee. Spencer Ray with a returnable kick, but he is still at the 24-yard line. 38-yard kick, and they are working on McCoy. They have uh, basically nothing in the way of any kind of quarterback experience behind McCoy. So very critical what comes out of that conversation. In 18. Tom Mattis, the pilot, Glenn Hampton, the cameraman, high above the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, providing these aerial pictures, traveling over 100,000 miles every year, covering major sporting events. Antoine Carter on first down, driven out by Lusk at the 26-yard line. Pickup of perhaps two for Carter, and the possession chart in the first half for Arizona looks this way. It's been a, it's been a lot of punts and a lot of miscues also. Well, the one extended drive, they go 12 plays and miss the field. Yeah, that was a big one. That 77-yard drive for the touchdown, that's the one they had the two penalties on, which really kept that drive alive. You know, I keep on looking down at the field on McCoy. He's is, uh, he is up running around a little bit. He's moving, but uh, he's got a noticeable limp. Shotgun for White on second and eight. To cut it to the right sideline, he'll keep, and Ellis will wrap him up for perhaps one at the 27. Ellis just kind of hanging around in the right neighborhood to make that pass. That's what you call a coverage sack, too, when the quarterback runs right into you. Watch this from a shotgun position. Not a lot of place to step up in the pocket. The pocket's collapsing from the backside, and there's the big man, number 83, Luther Ellis. From Mancos. Colorado and typical of the guys who have excelled for both these teams because he wasn't highly touted in high school is almost an unknown they spotted him as a diamond in the rough they polished him to the point where he's a consensus all American so both teams have done it White with all day then just does get it off flag down dice makes the catch and as he comes back may have the first down if the play stands at the 35. And that flag was thrown way out in the flat, away from the football. Now, Arizona's saying it's against them. It may be holding, defensive holding, because the flag was thrown way over on the far sideline. Yep, defensive holding. Bentley's all night against Utah really hurt. Well, I know you see a lot of people that can jump. And we talked about Luther Ellis and, and all of his statistics. Can you imagine a man 288 pounds jumping 33 inches on a vertical jump? That's that's in Michael Jordan's uh, category. Bench press 550, 48, 40 yard dash, 6'6", 288 pounds. He's not a number one draft choice and uh, there's no justice. Look at the scratch marks on top of his helmet. Did you see that? Defensive holding <laughs> on an eligible receiver, 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. 
See, Lyman used that helmet. Look at that. Look at the front top of that helmet. You see all those scratches and digs? That's when you're coming in on that bull rush and you're using that helmet just to kind of get into the offensive line. You know, all the teams that, that put the little decals, the little <laughs> insignias down, that's the best reward that a defensive lineman yeah. can Yeah, well, have. you know what's amazing? Defensive linemen do that. After a game, you'll come into the huddle and practice because most teams wear, they, you wear your practice helmets the same as your game helmets. And you'll say, hey, look at this one right here. And you kind of point at those scratches and say, oh, man, I, you should see when I hit this guy. But they love that paint from the other person's helmet and those digs. Well, you're a sick lot. <laughs> Tripped up Carter and another flag sailing from way across on the other end of the field. And this time the Utes are doing the celebrating. Yeah, where Woods made the stop. Yeah, where that one's thrown, it's almost always holding on the offensive line on the back side of the play. And that's what it's going to be. Officials giveth, taketh away, and what was first down on the 37 will march back. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat first down. The officials tonight from the Big 8 Conference. Boy, now is where you come off the football. If you're Utah, you come off the football hard. Now, you know that Luther Ellis is going to get doubled, so you got Bronzel Miller to the outside. He's got them 12 sacks. And then you have Kafusi in there. Kafusi on the other side. You've got some real power coming up the middle. Not much blitzing so far from the U's. And none here. Right from the pocket. Almost oh. intercepted by Boyd. That's three right in their hands if they've dropped. Gosh. And this is a team that doesn't drop the ball. I mean, we're talking about a team that has, Leary has six interceptions, Boyd's got six. They know how to catch the football. Look at this, right in his hands. Again, White not able to step up because he had a defender right in, but there, that's incredible. That's like you're looking downfield saying, oh man, who's gonna block for me? Now you wanna close your eyes, but don't close them when you're catching. There are six interceptions. Maybe the worst pass all night from White. Nowhere in the neighborhood of Lovett. Carter ripped down and uh, almost could have been face masking by Harold Luss, but a clean tackle with the 37. Yeah, I think he got him around the neck. I think that's what kept it from being a face mask, but watch his head come back. Good burst outside here. Gets outside now. Get upfield. Now watch this across the neck. You see he's on the neck. And that's what pulled the head back. Again, good blocking up front. Good look there by Carter to find the outside. If he had any questions about his head, I think it's well on that one. If he survived that, that's yeah. uh, that, that's uh, probably as good a test of that sprained neck that he suffered against Arizona State as he's likely to get tonight. They play third and 11, 7.23, third period, tied at seven. Again, no blitz. Broken up by Kareem Leary, who did not go for the interception this time, and wisely so. He got around Lamar Lovett and settled for the deflection. I'll bet you that Dan White has been getting up off the ground 20 times tonight. Every time he throws a football, he can't deliver it where he steps forward. He's just he's just getting so much pressure on him. He is not, he just Third down 11, that is a tough down for a quarterback because you know they're going to be coming off the football. Marsh waiting for the kick at his 26-yard line. Utah may get as good a starting point as they've had for virtually any possession so far tonight. Peyton concentrates on height, really more than distance. Nickname Sky will tell you that. This one drives Marsh back from the 18 and the return to the 24-yard line. Good kick, 46 yards by Peyton. We pause now for these messages from your local station. This is the Raycon that... The Utah Utes in their third consecutive bowl, just their fifth in history, Arizona's 11th bowl appearance. And Neither offense can mount much at all here in the third period, but the good news for Utah is McCoy is back and will stay in the game at quarterback. First and ten. And no gain, and that has been the rule. Anytime they've tried to challenge the uh, Utah uh, 
ability to block the Arizona run defense. Lopez on the tackle. A flag is down on the carry by Juan Johnson. Oh, with that flag thrown, that's the holding spot on the offensive line. That's not what you want. Not when you're trying to get some offensive continuity started. Holding on the offense. Ten yards from the end of the run. Repeat first down. Wildcats this year allowed a total of 63 yards per game on the ground. Two years ago, second in the nation, 65 yards per game. Last year, they led the nation with an unbelievable 30 yards per game allowed. And again, in the mid-60s, second overall in the NCAA this year. They do it every year the same way. Well, I don't know how many yards Utah has. We may have to call on Dennis to give us that, but I mean to tell you, this has just been a, a defense that has just stopped them up front. On first down, again, no running room for Juan Johnson. I think that's lost yardage on that play. There's just nowhere to go. You're going to see him. He's going to run right into the back of his offensive lineman. Watch this. Bam! Right into his offensive guard. Now get out of the way. This is the backup for Bruski making this up. Jimmy Sprott, redshirt freshman, Lakeside, Arizona. Boy, they come off the football quick. Then when you get your quarterback nicked a little bit, he doesn't feel good. You know, don't have your running game going. Oh boy, you got to find something to get generate a little offense. Eight man front. Second and 20, McCoy sacked again at the 13 by Sprott. I thought Bruski was in there on that play. <laughs> I sure could have thought he was in that play. I saw a 68. I almost swore he was in there. He was. <laughs> Man, watch how quick he comes off the ball here. Left to your screen. Bam, there he is. He gets a hand on the quarterback. That's amazing. He directed McCoy <laughs> into the sack by Sprott. So back-to-back -back stops behind the line for Jimmy Sprott. And McCoy, who didn't feel great before that, feels even worse now. Yeah, and Jimmy Sprott's there. He said, he's just a freshman. He says, man, if I could ever play like the fella in front of me, Bruski, imagine what I'm going to be. Last two plays he has. Well, they've gone backwards to a third and 21, their own 13-yard line. The line to game to 34. Now you don't want to force the ball anywhere. Boy, very conservative. They just want to avoid backing up again. And McCoy's coming off the field. He's hurt. I don't care. They can put him in there, but that young man is hurt. He's way back on about the five-yard line. You see that walk? That's not a quarterback that's walking well. Whatever he hurt on that last series, he's just out there on guts playing. Not much bounce to him right now. Now you watch the quarterback. He walks even behind the bench when he's coming back to the back to the field. He doesn't want anybody asking him how oh. he feels. Well, he doesn't feel well. Pretty obvious on that. He doesn't even stop and ask the trainer. That's put on the rush, but a nice kick. Ray from his 47. Cut back to the middle. They'll start from the 40 of Utah. 38-yard punt comes back 13 yards. And with 4.07 to play in the third, Arizona set up finally to break this 7-7 time. If you can see the attention that Mike McCoy's getting, I think he's got something like a hip pointer or an ankle sprain or something like that, but he walked all the way back to the field. You can just see now they're putting, it's almost as if maybe he got dinged on the play. But he's just not in good shape. He played that last series. That was just pure guts out there. A lot of people around him. White stumbling after taking the snap and then hangs one up deep. It is knocked away from Richard Dice by Leary. Kareem Leary, who was second in the whack with 17 pass deflections during the year. And you can't play it any better than that. Keep your cushion now. Turn. You see Leary running step for step. When the, he looks back, Leary looks back, just tips the football away. Doesn't make contact with the receiver. Look at that. Just tips the football away. No wonder he's got six interceptions. You play cornerback like that, you're supposed to. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. You're an oasis out there. You're all by yourself. You got nobody behind you. Blitz comes, great call against the Blitz, and Anquan Carter is close for a first down at the 32. One of the better runs all night by Arizona, another tackle by Leary. 
And I think Utah was thinking pass. You see him come up on the line there real quick, trying to get that quarterback pressure. Great call there by the by the offensive heads of Arizona. That real quick draw pops through the line, picks up about eight, nine yards on the play. Third and two from the 32. Wayne Aquina is the offensive coordinator up in the press box making all the calls. Tony very rarely will get involved in the play calling. Carter for a loss is stuck by Mark Rexford. This is the way Rexford opened this game. Anybody that headed toward his spot in the middle got sent back. Third down and one. This is what you want your linebacker to do. Big lineman take big man on big man, and Rexford steps right up in the middle. Smash mouth football, drops him for a loss. That was third down and one. Look at Rexford. He's saying third down and one, now it's fourth down and about three. And McLaughlin, who was way short from 54, will try this one from a little better than 50. We'll call it 50 officially. It's a fake, and he will punt the pooch kick. Perfectly oh, perfect. angled at the seven-yard line. Great call. That was an excellent call. That was going to be a long field goal. And what they do is they just snap the ball back to him. The defense has got to play field goal. They play field goal, and he pooches the ball out inside the 10-yard line. Call of the game was the fake field goal that McLaughlin Pooch kicked out of bounds at the seven yard line. Well, an interesting call on this play. They pooch it down. Now, really, this fellow's got a strong arm. Leg, he made three of five from 50 yards plus, but they get him deep in the territory. We talked about McCoy being hurt, nobody being backed up on him. We saw him tape his ankle. This may be a real strategy right here. If McCoy can't leave him, lead him out of here, they're going to get great field position again. Brown bounces off the middle of the pile, runs right into Sean Harris, and for all his trouble, he may gain one yard here. I wonder if Arizona makes that call if McCoy is healthy. Well, I, that's, a, that's an excellent call. You see the ankle right there. It's the right ankle. They taped it over top of the shoe. Evidently, he has either sprained an arch or else he's twisted his ankle because they taped it right over top of the shoe trying to get some strength. But boy, did he draw a crowd when he went to the sideline on that last series. Because you figure if there's any kicker in America who can make a 50-yarder, it's the Groza Award winner. Exactly. Yeah, he's got three of five over 50. Steps up into another sack by Osborne. Osborne wrapping up McCoy at the nine. Officially, it won't go as a sack, but he has been all over Mike McCoy tonight. Well, look at the number of blue shirts in the backfield there. There's blue shirts all over the place back there. The enduring symbol of the Goodyear Blint Eagle providing these beautiful aerial pictures above Anaheim Stadium tonight. Boy, a big series here. Big down. Third down, about seven yards to go. You don't want to force the ball and make a mistake, but you've got to get a first down. You don't want to give it back to Arizona deep in your own territory. Now the final minute of the third period, McCoy will hang it up for Marsh. Way overthrown. Well covered by Claudius Wright, and they will have to kick from their own end zone. Oh, and look at the limp on McCoy as he comes to the sideline. He tries to run off, you can see. That's not a job by a quarterback. And you wonder, well, why not at least try the backup? The reason is the backup threw a total of six passes this year. Yeah. Brandon Jones. Yeah, he just has no experience in a situation like this. So coaches decide, say, hey, we're going to try a couple series, see if McCoy can loosen up that ankle. Sometimes when you sprain your ankle, it hurts right away, and pretty soon it kind of calms down and you get back into the flow of the game. You don't want to get in stiff. Alcats play for the return. Very low kick. And Ray will bring this one back inside the 35 with a flag down. 35-yard punt. He needed much better distance than he got and the return makes it a net of 25 yards well the flag may be the big play on this series because the flag is thrown back at about the 38 yard line two of them in fact one from the far sideline one from midfield illegal block Arizona that's gonna that's gonna help Utah a little bit but their main concern right now has got to be their quarterback is he going to be able back. to play on the receiving team 10 yards from the spot of the fall, first down. 
Now watch this play right here with McCoy. Watch this. See, you have to push off that right leg, and he's not able to push. You see him step up quickly on that left leg. The right leg is the drive leg. It's what drives you off the football, and he's just not able to deliver. And that ball was that ball was 10 yards overthrown. Well, Arizona ended up losing 15 yards on that exchange of punts. Thanks to the penalty, they back up to the 49 of Utah. 50 seconds to go, third quarter. And they run the reverse for Dice. Didn't fool anybody. Ernest Boyd with a loss back to the 46-yard line of about six yards. And I want to tell you, this is just great coaching. Every player has a responsibility, and there's one that has what you call backside containment. On this play, it's, it's Bowie. He's got backside containment. He's got to be, a, excuse me, it's Boyd. He's got that backside containment. He's got to turn that football back in. If he pursues too fast, that play's going to go for 20, 30 yards downfield. That is just excellent coaching. That's about as exotic a play as Arizona may have in their arsenal tonight. Short toss, Carter. They got it out on a flanker, and Carter tosses all the way to the 35 of Utah. First down, pick up of 18 yards. Well, you remember that who, who made that play? That's a Rocket Ishmael play. That quick screen out there to the flat and let those big linemen get out there. That is the end of the third period. We're still tied at seven. We pause for these messages from your local station on the Raycom Network. Dave Barnett along with Dave Rowe in Anaheim Stadium. Last play of the third quarter. Yeah, this is that Rocket Ishmael pass. What you do is you throw it out in the flat. Now you let those big linemen get up there and you start cutting back across the field. You see those offensive linemen pop in there. Hey, that's a good play. That picked up a first down. That picked up about 18 yards on that play. High formation. Utah's 35-yard line. The first man through Miles, who has not had a whole lot of room, the redshirt freshman from Pasadena for a couple. And the numbers through three quarters are just unbelievably bad for Utah, considering how unbelievably good they normally are on the offensive side of the ball. 39 total yards on 41 plays. They have averaged less than one yard per snap. Well, now, wait a minute. Five yards rushing? How many times have they run the football? Five yards rushing? That's incredible. They've run the ball 25 times. They picked up five yards. Okay, now quickly, how much is that per carry? You, you talked about the nine inches per carry earlier. Uh, about two inches. <laughs> Short toss, dice, and he's wrapped up by Leary. 27-yard line will be third down. The scoring summary is real simple. You had uh, Carter stealing the ball from Garrett, 23 yards in the first quarter. And then you had uh, the fumble at the five-yard line. Utah cashes it in on the Brown run from six yards out, and we're still there, 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, this Utah defense, they're going to change the whack. The whack has always been that wacky conference, wide-open offense. I think that's what it stood for. But, man, have they played defense tonight. They are flat out coming off the football, as is Arizona. As established by McBride in the last five years. Carter into the right side of the line will not have the first down. Third down and about two yards to go. They want they run right up the middle. And you talk about strong football. Uh, watch this. Big man on big man at the line. No place to go. The running back just swallowed in there. Henry Kafusi. The junior from Salt Lake City. There's the architect of that uh, defense. The well, last time McLaughlin on the fake executed the pooch kick. His number's excellent on the year. He is an All-American. He'll try a 45-yarder on the hold of Ryan Hessen. He has enough leg, and he is good. Twelve thirty-nine remaining. Steve McLaughlin 
breaking the tie. 10-7 Arizona. When young policyholders come to me, I'll look. 7-7 seven uh, seven, seven tie broken on officially a 44-yard field goal by McLaughlin. 12-39 to play in the fourth quarter. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this program without the expressed prior written consent of Raycom Incorporated is prohibited. So 10-7, and the way Utah has been unable to run and the way McCoy has been unable to set up and throw off that injured right ankle, 10-7 looks pretty big right now. It's a, it's a, it's a big lead. Well, they have got to get some offense started here. Clarence Lawson returns from the 14, has the throw. But he turns back to the middle. If he had continued toward the near sideline, that might have produced six. As it is, he settles for 31 yards. Or oh, I thought he should have broke to his left. It's easy to say when you're up here looking, but watch when he catches this football. He finds great blocks up front now. Right here now. Get to the outside. Right in there. He fakes them back and comes back into the middle. But I think if he had gotten to the outside, he had a lot of running room. But he gives him good field position. Now the question is, what's McCoy able to do? Can he push off on that foot? The running game is non-existent for Utah tonight. He's got to be able to throw the football. He'll try it off play action. And down he goes, and a flag is down. McCoy bouncing up, but his knee had touched, and a flag was thrown in his backfield. Oh, and that's got to be a holding call. That's back in the back part of the play, and there's the holding call. I think it was on Osborne that he was being held because he was the one that came all the way around the back side. Well, that offensive line has uh, has cleared holes averaging, according to Dennis Manishan, who's figured it up, seven inches per running play. How much pressure that seven puts inches. on the floor? It's, it's incredible pressure. Well, the back side of this, when you've got your defensive lineman coming around from the back side, Rolling. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat first down. Maybe we can see it on the backside. Look for 71 on the backside of the play. See if he's not held. Now McCoy's got there. There's one of the holds right there. That looks like a dance. That's it. And that's the All-American. Anthony Brown, 74, the left tackle. Yeah, there it is. Anthony Brown, 74. He's got to take him down, but you've got to protect your quarterback. Holding Bruski, that, that's a great point. That's one area where it's better to take the penalty and allow McCoy to at least stay in there. Over the middle, and it is bounced into the hands of Sean Harris. Harris returns it to the 20-yard line, the deflected interception. This is incredible. This ball, the receiver goes down for it. As he catches the football, it just bounces up out of his hands, and the defensive back is right there. We've seen some of the craziest plays I've seen in football. Watch this. This is a completion right there. That's a completion, right? Look at the ball come up. Boom, he's standing right there. Incredible. It was intended for Jamil Williams, who had only six catches during the season. Well, he's open. There's the catch. Look the way the ball bounces. It almost looked like it might have bounced off his hands, which hit his knee. Mom, I love you. Mom, I love you. Yeah, you deserve to say that. On Juan Carter is swarmed. He'll lose three. Well, there's no quit in Utah right now. I can tell you that. They're flat out still coming off the football. They played with this intensity, as has Arizona, all night long. When's the last time you saw so many running plays end up in minus yardage? No, absolutely nowhere. Yeah, Arizona's averaged two yards per running yeah, play. Yeah, they're, they're averaging 72 inches per running play. <laughs> Utah's averaging seven inches per running play. You did that without a calculator. Yeah, I know. I, well, that's my higher education. Just an incredible defensive game. But a marvelous football game. See, I love defensive games. I don't like those 48 to 14 games. On the draw, Miles, and he'll lose back to the 28. They're going the wrong way. The first play lost two, two yards. Oh, 
Oh, and a late flag. Don't tell me there's a face mask. Well, either that or they get Jeff Kafusi for the personal foul. That's it. He continued yeah. on well after the whistle. They yeah. finally threw the flag. Yeah, when you hear that flag, you've got to stop. Now, look at this play. Watch what this play is going to be. The ball was going to be out around the 33-yard line. Again, watch the tail end of this play. No place to run. Great play by the defense. Now, you let up. The whistle is blown right now. Personal you don't keep on going like this. On the defense, but watch this at the end. The distance, you don't do that. Down. That's just foolish. Now that changes that play from being out at the 33, 34 yard line. It gives them a first down at the 14. Oh, is that a killer play? Could be calling the. Could be talking about ball game right there. Well, on that that call. A, it's a huge turnaround. It's just a foolish play. You want that emotion, but you've got to stop when the whistle blows. Look at the turnaround on this play. So first down from the 14 instead of back near the 30. Antoine Carter breaks a couple of hits. Has the 8, maybe the 7. Finally wrapped up by Boyd. And that was a third down play, too, when he lost that yardage. Boy, is that a huge play. You're, you're talking about 34-yard line. You're talking about a... Close to, uh, well, what is that? Let's see, 34, 7 is 40, almost a 50-yard field goal. Boy, and McBride waded into oh. that sideline and really delivered a lecture. Well, coaches just do not like foolish mistakes. They want you to play with intensity, but there's a fine line between intensity and just a foolish play. Miles inside the 5 to the 3. The 240-pound freshman fullback. Yeah, that was going to be a 50-yard field goal try. Now, the worst they have is about a, what, 22, 23-yard try? What a difference. If they can hold them to three, it's almost okay. If they get seven here, it, the way McCoy is struggling, it's really hard to imagine you talking about. Yeah, it's third down. It's one yard line, one on the one, one yard to go. You'd almost expect a timeout in this situation just to kind of talk it over. Whether you're on offense or defense, somebody needs to come up with a big play. This is the first time all night we uh, we thought we would get a measurement. Well, Chain crew started in. All of a sudden, they headed back to the sideline. Dan White said, wait a minute. I want to see how far it is. The official went, go on back to the sideline. We know it's third down and at least one. And now with the play clock down to eight. He had to call a timeout. You see, you see White is out there saying, wait a minute. I want the measurement. You started out with the chains. They'll charge it with a timeout here. I think they asked for the measurement. It was denied, and the play clock was cranked up. And then, with still some confusion, now Arizona definitely wants the timeout. Well, it's a big timeout, too, because what it does is it allows your offense to come over and talk about it, get a little bit more in sync so you're not hurrying the play. Could be the ball game. 9.21 to play as they discuss third and one. You have a cold. Doctors agree. Out. Wildcats have discussed third down and one from the four with a 10 to seven lead and 921 remaining. Well, now you got so many options. You can come out, try that long count. You get the free first down. Here they come. Flags are down. Miles is pushed back. Now he appeared to have the first down before he was pushed back, and the flags were almost uh, as as the ball was snapped. And White is saying that uh, as Utah tried to guess the snap count, they were offsides. That's, but they, were they drawn offsides? No nope. neutral zone. Nope. Gambled and lost. Well, that's what you got to do on defense. Sometimes you've got to gamble that you can get in there. Now you see a lot of wholesale defensive changes by Utah. They know it's going to be run football up here. They're expected to run all the way. They think they can stop them. Offside, on the, the defense, half the distance, first down. They really killed themselves on that. Oh. I can't tell you how much that, that penalty, and nobody feels worse than Kafusi does, but that is such a foolish penalty. It changes the complexion so much. I mean, you're looking at a 50-yard field goal, and now they've got first down on about the three-yard line. You're asking your defense to really come up with a huge play. This is an awfully tough series. 
Play action wide open and dropped by Tim Thomas. In the middle of the end zone with nobody near him. Oh, oh, oh me, oh my, if we see some crazy plays tonight. It's a great call. It's a it's a play action pass into the center. You got the fullback driving over. Watch them all. You see right there's Rexford 55 coming in there. Watch this. Nobody. I got it. Oops. Thomas made one catch all year, but it was for the winning touchdown of 34 yards in the 10 to 7 win at Washington State. That was incredible. Well, why not go back to it again? Give a second chance from the other side. Well, it's Connor, and Connor goes nowhere. Might even have lost one. Boy, you talk about defensive tenacity. This is just a tenacious Utah defense. I'm going to tell you something. They're coming off the football. They are playing hard football. You look at the number of the white shirts just flying to the football. Now it's third down and three. They haven't made an inch on these last three plays. Thomas has had his crack at it. He heads to the sideline along with Carter. They pull on Juan Carter on what will be third and goal from the three. And the lone setback is Miles. Well, you almost have to pass the ball, and they go into a shotgun. They're saying, hey, we are going to pass it. Low snap handled by White. To the corner of the end zone, and it's he caught it. and dropped by Lovett. Oh, mercy. He drops it. What is Dick Toomey saying? Wait a minute. What in the world's going on here? That is incredible. Watch how wide open he is. He's out there. There's nobody near him. Look at this. Nobody even close to him. The ball hits him right in the seven. Again, look at this. Right in the middle of the chest. Oh, mercy. Can you begin to understand how frustrating that's going to be, both for White and for Love? Maybe more so for White. They will settle for the 20-yard field goal. Flags are down. The kick is good, but we'll see if the play stands. Well, that's offside. Someone tried to guess early. But now, do you take the points off? I don't think you take the football points off. I think you assessed it on, on the uh, kickoff. Yeah, there you see right there. No, we want the points. There's no telling what might happen. We better take the points is what he's saying. But the real point is Utah's still in this game. Oh, yeah. They're just six down. Had either of those balls been Outside, caught. Outside, on the defense, decline, score. Well, Utah would need two scores, and it's almost impossible to see him scoring twice, but anything's possible now with 8.05 remaining. No little cinnamon. Arizona goes up 13 to 7 on an eight play drive that covers 17, 17 yards. 17 yards, eight plays. Just incredible. Uh, his teammates telling Lamar Lovett to shake it off. I don't know if you can, though. That's two Jackie Smith that three plays on the same series. Surely is. Surely is. Amazing thing is Utah still in this football game big. They have seen the big returns by the use of the squib kick. At the 33-yard line, into the hands of Derek Marston. And that's where Utah will go. They have time. They have 8.01 to go, all three timeouts. They need one touchdown to do it, thanks to those drops by Arizona. Just incredible. Look at 1994. 37 uh, points per game. Look at the total yards. 400, almost 450. They've got 39. They average 23 first downs a game. they got three. And they got a quarterback that's hurt. But I'll tell you one thing, if he ever wanted to have a spark, he got it from his defense on that last series. The fact that they were able to stop him, first down on the three-yard line and hold him to a field goal. Gave him time, got it off to Brown. Charlie Brown is swarmed at the 42. McCoy has a streak of 18 consecutive games with at least one touchdown pass on the line here in his final collegiate game. 
If he gets one here, it could mean victory. Well, one thing you have to do in a situation like this, if you're a player, and you see him going in there clapping his hands, you want to take away from all the offensive players any thought that you're hurt. You walk in there and you just say, hey, okay, guys, let's put it all together. Let's do it. I'm fine. Okay. So how's your ankle? It's great. Don't worry about it. Let's go back to playing football. Tucker, the motion man, four wides, but on the ground, Brown, and he'll have a first down. I think against maybe any other team, they throw deep on second and one. Here, they just settled for their fourth first down of the game, and they're done with it. Well, that was one of their longer runs. I mean, when you stop and think about it, we had 25 runs. They had five yards off, the, uh, off those 25 runs. So uh, that gets them a first down. They made about four yards on that running play. Really big series from McCoy. He's never had a bigger series in his whole collegiate career than this. And so far, so good. Good protection again. Now it breaks down, and he's sacked at the 36-yard line by Bruski. Bruski has his third sack of the night. Boy, big play by Bruski up top. What they're doing is they're doing a twist. One takes outside. You see Bruski come underneath. It's called a twist between the tackle and the end. The tackle goes out, the end comes up, scrapes off them. It's almost like a pick in basketball. And they do it so well up there. Hoffman says 97, Bruski, Osborne's done it tonight. They have really played well. What does that change it? You almost have to, you almost, when you have, see that, you almost tell the quarterback, just throw the ball, get rid of it. Don't take an eight, nine yard loss. Seven officially, second and 17. And they're coming again. He steps around the pressure, delivers on the run. It's caught by Marsh, who's driven out by Kelly Malvo at midfield. And you know what's amazing about that play? Did you see McCoy run? He almost ran as if he had no pain. It's almost like he's putting that out of his mind. All of a sudden, he's saying, hey, I'm all right. Again, pocket collapses. He steps up in, finds a little seam. Now look at that. He's on the run. Good delivery on the run, too. Even before tonight, though, nobody ever questioned Mike McCoy's toughness. Last season, he was bothered by uh, a circulatory problem in his right arm. It would go numb. It would go dead. He had no strength from time to time. They figured out it was a rib pressing on an artery. They had the rib removed in June. And he's playing one rib short all year. Sixth best passer in the country. Third and six. Desperation pass. Caught and dropped. Now Utah afflicted by dropsy. Boy, what a play by McCoy to look downfield and see him and deliver that football in there. But Tucker just dropped it right in his hands. Just a little flick there by uh, McCoy to find him. But McCoy under a lot of pressure there. Step up in the pocket, couldn't find it. Last second delivered it, dropped his pass. On for his 10th punt of the night, Jason Jones. Ray standing at the 11-yard line. We have 5.54 remaining. And Jones, an expert, is hanging it up high. Ray lets it drop. Race is on. It's down at the one. By Markham Merritt. Perfect punt, 49 yards. Would you see how high that punt was? When it hit the ground, it just bounced straight up. The only thing you don't want to do on this play, now it's over his head, he signals fair catch, trying to slow him down. Now, don't carry it into the end zone. Just swat it, knock it back, don't carry it in. But you see what he does, he goes down quickly on his knees, so the ball is down when he's on his knees. Utah's only score came when they had Arizona backed up right here. We'll see what happens when we come back. It's a busy year for our hosts in the Freedom Bowl, the Orange County Sports Association. They have, among other activities, coming up a great college baseball round-robin tournament. Cal State, Fullerton, Texas, Pepperdine, and Notre Dame. The senior PGA Tour at Mesa Verde Country Club in March. And the NCAA Division I Ice Hockey Championships in 99 will be played just across the street at the Arrowhead Pond. That's how far Arizona is from their own goal line with 5.44 remaining. They're protecting a six-point lead. And you remember what happened on that last series in this position. Audible by White. And Miles, they 
able to gouge out at least a couple to the three. Last time, White on the sneak fumbled, and that led to the score by Utah. Harold Lust comes up from free safety and plugs Miles after a pickup of, uh, they'll call it three, second and seven. Time a factor. Utah has all three timeouts. Arizona has two as we go inside five minutes and 20 seconds. Offensive coordinator for Arizona, Dwayne Aquino, up in the press box. Well, he was fun to talk with today. He said he had, he really has some really interesting things. He walks his quarterbacks around the field before the game to show them where the clock is and all different types of things like that. That was really an interesting talk. Carter gets stuck. And the Wildcats may have to think about a pass out of their own end zone now as they send the play in through Richard Dice. They shovel the wideouts most of the time to get the plays in. Well, you want to get a little bit more yardage in this because from where that ball would be snapped, the punter wouldn't be back as normal 15 yards. Normally, punters stand about 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. Well, they're only on about the three to four yard line. He'd be short. So they need to pick up some more yardage. Hopefully get a first down for their team. White short drop hangs it up deep for Dice overthrown. And Tommy, in fact, got the worst of it. Tough guy, though. He plays baseball in the offseason with people 30 years uh, younger than he is. Yep, he's tough. Watch this. He was trying to protect. He was trying to protect his player. Coach, you got to keep a wider base. Now watch how quick he <laughs> pops up. I'm fine. Did he catch it? <laughs> so on will come the punting unit. They'll have to kick from about as far back as they can fit Matt Payton in that end zone. Yeah, you start to think now, do you rush the football? You got the fear of uh, roughing the punter. Or do you try to get the return? You see the return man's only standing on the 40-yard line. Look how far back in the in the end zone the punter is. They're going They're to take return. the safety. Ah. They take the safety to make it 13-9. With four minutes, 11 seconds remaining. And that's a good call because, see, the field goal still doesn't win for you. You still got to score a touchdown either way. So smart call there. Just a smart call. A lot of respect for Utah's return game. They've already burned them twice on long sure. kick returns. And Tommy did not want to put it in their hands with the kind of field position they would have had. Time out. We pause for these messages from your local station on the Raycom Network. They're 20, and they've got McLaughlin out with the team. Now, almost every time you see a free kick, it's a punt. But Arizona has such a strong-legged kicker in the uh, Groza Award winner that they have McLaughlin out there, and they'll try and drive it as far away as they can. But think about this. Utah's gotten some great returns on the kickoffs. He hangs it up for Benton from the 23-yard line, right up the middle. This is another big return. Beck! Inside the 10-yard line. Four yards for Cal Beck. Well, you remember what Arizona did on the last kickoff? They kicked that little short one because they were worried about Utah's return. This is the result of that return. You said, why were they kicking off because of the strong leg? Most teams in that situation punt the ball. What a return. Beck's 67 yarder set up the winning score against BYU in their last regular season game. Let's see if this one sets up the winning score in the Freedom Bowl. From the five yard line, McCoy pump fake. On that bad leg, he'll just throw it into the 10th row. Touchdown. <laughs> Touchdown. He caught it. He said, Hey, I was open. <laughs> Well, All these people it. who have been dropping him, I know. get that guy out. That's right. Who is that guy? It was a nice catch. Maybe we can get another replay of that. Let's watch it. Good trajectory now. Look the ball in. 
Keep that wide base, spread out, slide. Good. Oh, he bobbled it. Oh, well, he had just a little bit of a bobble. But he, the key, he looked it in. That's right. He looked the ball all the way in. <laughs> Three wide outs on the right side. Claiborne is left. And you got to pass the football. They just have not been able to run. Ball is deflected and incomplete. It was deflected on the line, and about eight guys had a crash at it on the rebound. Everybody had a shot at that ball. Watch the tail end of this football. When the ball gets tipped up on the line, going to be to the left of your screen. Watch when it gets tipped. Right there, it gets tipped. Now look, everybody going for the ball. Kevin Dyson had it for an instant, and then he got jarred loose. It was deflected by Osborne, the nose guard. So third and goal from the five. Now you start thinking about, do they go for a field goal? If they don't make this, do they go for a field goal? Here we go. They have these uh, exotic plays that spread the defense as much as possible. They've got four wideouts. And a man in motion. Big pattern for Marsh, and he got hung up. As soon as he reached the end zone, the ball was headed toward the back corner, and there is no flag on what looked like a possible pass interference by Arizona. Oh, but you should have looked on the other side of the field. There was someone open on the other side of the field. He wasn't only open. He was open by 15 yards on the far side of the field. Timeout, Utah. They had two left with three minutes and 42 seconds to go. Raycom has been brought to you by the Motorola Flip Cellular Phone. The more you need a cellular phone, the more you need Motorola. Why Pringles, so fresh, once you pop, you can't, you can't, you can't stop. And by MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. Fourth and goal from the five, and the Utes will pass on a field goal, which could bring them within one. They will go for it. Now, go to Anaheim. <laughs> Dyson in motion. He was the man who was wide open on the last play. McCoy looking his way this time. But chased, and Gus does get it off. It's caught by Dyson. Touchdown, Utah. McCoy ever get that football off? He was going down. He was going down. He had Chuck Osborne draped all over him, got it off. Dyson, who had good. been wide open on the last play but never got a look from McCoy, brought it in for the go-ahead score. With three minutes and 34 seconds remaining and the extra point to come from Dan Pulsifer, who's a perfect 48 of 48 during the year. This one is good. What a play for Utah. I mean, McCoy, he's got the bad ankle. He's rolling out to the strong side. He's going to go down. He's in the arms. Just an incredible play. Watch this play. Nobody's open right now. Get all the way to the outside. Now watch 71. Run him down. Look at this. He's in his arms. He's going down. He throws the ball up and watch him come in there. There's the one-handed. Watch Dyson come from the right side of your screen. It's almost like he had a baseball glove on. Watch him. This is just desperation. Throw it up. He's not even in the picture. There's Dyson. Look at that one hand. From the blimp. Here's how it looked. Oh, this is an incredible play. Again, there's the quarterback running out. He's on about the 11, 12 yard line. You see Dyson. Now he just comes out of nowhere to catch the football. And with that, the Utes have their first lead of the night, 16-13 with 3.34 remaining. Now, how big are the two drops in the end zone by oh. Arizona last time they had the ball? Huge. Absolutely huge. But you see Arizona is still only two points down. In this situation, is it 16 or 15? It's 16, so they're three points down. 
I was going to say, if it was 15, I thought for a second it was 15. If it had been that, wow. All set up by the 74-yard return of the free kick by Cal Beck. Two games in a row, huge kick returns to set up go-ahead scores. And the split kick into the hands of Gary Taylor. Arizona will start 69 yards away with three and a half to go. Wack versus Pac-10. How about that? Six and three this year. And as big a win as any, that Colorado State victory early against Arizona, which had started 4-0, as a preseason national championship pick by Sports Illustrated. They were all the way up to six in the country before that upset loss. Oregon twice defeated, first by Utah, then by Hawaii. They made it all the way to the Rose Bowl. Well, what Dan White needs to do now is not panic. He's a leader out there. He's a junior. Supposed to have that experience. Just go back to your offense. There's that same play. Carter underneath for about nine yards. Yeah, you got a lot of time. You got over three minutes left. You got three timeouts. You got a lot of time to drive downfield. And there's the man who knows it. Wayne Aquina, offensive coordinator. Well, they, we have seen some plays tonight. As weird a sequence of plays <laughs> as we've ever seen, I think, in the same game. Just incredible. Of course, White stays in that shotgun. There's no fool in him now. All the linemen are in the upstance. Everybody knows it's going to be passed now. Excellent protection. Ball is knocked loose and picked up by Henry Kafusi. Utah ball at the 31-yard line. I thought that might be Bronzel Miller who swatted that ball out of White's hands. As he was going by, as White stepped up in the pocket, someone just swatted the ball out of his hands. See if it's maybe it's 99. It's Jeff Kafusi who made the uh, it, the penalty that is. led to the last Arizona. Oh score. mercy! Does that make up for it? The brother combination. Does Jeff, that make up for it? Jeff, whose boner that uh, that personal foul penalty led to the Arizona score, knocks it onto the turf where his brother Henry makes the recovery. 2.37 remaining Utah ball with the lead to protect them. Both teams with two timeouts. McCoy with the audible on the line. Give us to Brown. And what McCoy needs to do is look at that 25 second clock and use that as long as he can. What a play by Kafusi. Knocked that ball out of the quarterback's hands as the quarterback was looking downfield trying to step up in the pocket. They're all dumping water on him. Look at basic goat to hero <laughs> in what a, one series. Oh, what a play. Well, we talked about both these coaches elevating their programs to the next level. This has been everything we thought it would be as far as a football game. Domi has called his next to last timeout. Two and a half minutes remaining. Well, this is the comeback that Utah almost pulled off in this game against Southern Cal last year. Just incredible. See, you can see White there. He's describing what happened. I was stepping up in the pocket, and he just kind of swatted the ball out of my hand. I have just, I'll tell you one thing, you know, as we've talked many times tonight, you just don't expect defense like this in the WAC. This is a defense, and it just kind of epitomizes Fred Whittingham and his style of play. He was that way as a player. He's a very intense player, and he's got everything out of his football team tonight. Now McCoy needs to look at that clock. Let it run all the way down. It's down to 12, 11, 10. After the timeout, though, 2.30 remaining, and the Cats can only stop it one more time. Brown again, cuts back, turns it into a nice game. At the 24, he'll be three yards shy on what will be third down, and uh, there is the last Arizona timeout. Two minutes and 18 seconds. If uh, they make Utah settle for three here, there is still hope for the Wildcats. That's what they've got to be concentrating on. 
Well, that's exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to hold them to that three points and hope that your, your offense can drive the length of the field. They've got a big down coming up, third down about four. Now the question is, does Utah waste and try to throw the ball? And that stops the clock if they don't complete it. On the other hand, a running play, even one that comes up shy of the first down, will take you down somewhere around a minute 40 in that neighborhood. Interesting. You see what Dick Toomey's doing? He's saying, okay, offense, get in here. We're going to get the football back again. This is what we're going to do when we get the football back again. There he's out talking to the defense. Defense, you've got to come up with one big play. You've got to stop them. Well, this year began for Dick Tomey in Arizona with a uh, preseason camp up in the mountains near Tucson. It ends with this huddle. And this Utah crowd bouncing up and down with third down and three coming. No timeouts remaining for Arizona. And think about this. Utah's winning this football game with only four first downs and one first down in the second half. Wouldn't have believed it was possible. Again, Brown carries. He will not have the first down, and the clock will continue to roll under 210. And from where they are now, it would be right at about a 40-yard field goal attempt. And Pulsifer's best this year, 48 yards. He was 8 of 16. Yeah, but do you risk getting it blocked? I don't think so. I think you run the fourth down play. Just run the fourth down play. Don't risk it. Absolutely what Ron McBride is thinking as well. McCoy stays in. He'll take the snap somewhere around a minute 30. They only need one on fourth down. And he's going to roll and hit Tucker. Tucker chased at the 13-yard line and dropped by Claudius Wright. But there's a whack call and there's the first down to seal this game. <laughs> Just when you think he's not going to pass it, he pulls it out. He goes back to what brought him here to the dance, and that's the passing game. Good fake right there. That bad ankle. Tucker doesn't drop this one. In a game of big calls, that's as big as any. Oh, absolutely. You just didn't want to give the football back to Arizona. You're Utah, you have great respect for Arizona. You know the kind of offense they have. They can go to the length of the field in a hurry. Defense for Arizona backed up now to the 12, and they've got to be feeling totally helpless now. All they got to do is snap it maybe one more time, and this game's over. As well as they have played, what must this feel like for an Arizona defense, which is limited... Utah now to five first downs. One in the second half. One first down. Oh, two first downs. That's right, the, the last one. Two first downs in the second half. That is absolutely incredible. But you got to give credit to Utah's defense. You remember when they were down there on the three-yard line? First down on the three-yard line, they never quit. There it goes. <laughs> and he'll take it happily. And that will do it. Our Buick player of the game is Cal Beck, who for the second game in a row set up the winning touchdown with a huge return, 74 yards of the free kick by McLaughlin after the Arizona safety, and 140 return yards for the night. Ron McBride and the Utes finish 10-2. As they knock off Arizona, which will settle for an eight and four campaign. A big disappointment for a team that was expected to contend for the national title. Utah's first 10 win season ever, 16-13 our final. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated.